Okay, so we will open up the Wednesday, October 4th Selectman's meeting. I have to ask if anybody's recording. You're not recording the meeting. I'm not. Okay. Lake Cam is recording. Get the thumbs up. Oh, we got an, an audio <laughs> affirmation. Um, okay, so our first uh, agenda item is to meet with William Fuller to discuss the event, event management contract for the Wing Pond Lodge. I want to start out by saying I, I really appreciate you getting involved and I know that the Park Commission is very excited to work with you and I think it's a good move for the town so thank you it's been a good experience so far yeah and, and we certainly um, you know I think working with your company in terms of the bartending services that's gone really well too so right. I think that this is a great fit it's a natural for, segue that should yeah um, so we have the latest draft of the agreement along with our attorney's comments regarding the contract draft um, I think what we'll, we can do is um, what what version do you have uh, this is the latest version I have as of this Monday morning the one, okay, so same one I one, sent you all right yes. so maybe I'll just go through the the um, the points that town council raised and then if you're okay with what these say we can go back and, and talk about the ones that there may be inconsistencies with sure. so we can we can just get through the obvious stuff and if um you, either of you have questions about any of this you know just jump right in um so the first change uh was at one three so this was at 12 months in advance provision for elections um, that might occur on a weekend day. Um, we just talked about it before the meeting started and the, the reason, well, she recommended not to put that in there because of the time frame. Um, the, I think the, the provision of a weekend day it's kind of the operative, operative language where you said if there's a, you know, you have a wedding on a Saturday, obviously you need time to deal with that. Right. Um, I don't believe there'll ever be a Saturday impacted by this. I mean, it's our collective memory that we've never had an election on a Saturday. Um, we've had debt exclusions, but that's up to you to schedule. But all the correct. state elections are on a weekday. Right. Um, so if you're okay with it not that language not being in there is that something you're agreeable to i am okay um okay so the next one was two two one was this the other one you were talking about with yes. in terms of liability okay so there's there's a couple aspects to this there's the early termination aspect to it and then the assignment of contracts and uh, Bill's attorney um, added language that says once said assignment occurs, the town shall indemnify and hold harmless the manager or hold the manager harmless for any and all liability for any assigned event. The reasoning for that is is that if for some reason this contract is terminated, he doesn't get to deliver on the final contract. So he's not the one executing the contract on behalf of the town. He doesn't want to hold the liability. Um, our attorney said there could be liability on the part of the manager stemming from the contract that it had with the customer and then assigned to the town after the contract is terminated. It is also difficult to predict why the contract would be terminated and what liability may flow from that event or events. The town should not agree to binding, blindly assuming this potential liability. I, I don't know as if this makes any sense based on what you're saying. Right. I mean, do you guys have a different take on it? No. I, I think it would be, I mean, we're reviewing, the, the contract itself states that we're working with you to determine the language within the contracts that there'll be standard contracts right. that all of that would be in there so that's the the duplication of you know or i guess the redundancy of this correct because we're saying in that in this event we've already 
accepted the provisions of the contract, which would include a termination clause that in that <coughs> so it, it's just redundant language, right? Is that what you think her point was? I think she's not <coughs> looking potentially at the fact that we're creating the contracts in conjunction with Bill right. from the get go. And that's why no, she's I, I agree. I mean I, I think that this doesn't this isn't taking that in she's missing a piece of something because this doesn't really right. I don't think what you're asking for is unreasonable. Right. If I may, Lee is a uh, man, <laughs> Lee Smith, the attorney. Uh, but I have spoken to him because there were other provisions in the contract that um, he, there, he does, he is aware there's separate contracts between Bill and the brides or any renter. So he is going to enter into agreements separate uh, and not the Park Commission. He'll be entering into the agreements right so so, I th so he does know that there are some <coughs> contracts I interpreted the way uh, his response was it was like I almost said if there was a problem prior to my termination that I was handing that problem off that's the way I interpreted how he wrote that sentence mm -hmm. which isn't the case but that, that I understand the point there so in other words if something was going bad with the contract and then I was terminated, well, not, now who's handling that problem? Not that a lot of these problems crop up, but again, being a wedding, people want to see things executed almost to the T at the very mm -hmm. end, especially for execution. So our position was that in the event that a contract for term, for whatever reason it was, I was no longer involved and I couldn't follow through with everything to the letter of the contract with the bride right to the final day, that was the issue that my attorney brought up to, to try to get on the table and say, well, how do you solve that? Mm -hmm. If he didn't propose, he had the answer. He said that that's the issue we're trying to just protect everybody from. Right. Well, if I may, too, if we do decide to terminate the contract uh, with him, we'd make provisions that anything that's already been booked, you know, the deposits and all of that, I. I feel that we would get that information from him so that we would know what's already booked. Well, then that's what we'd probably want to see within this contract, I would assume, is an actual clause that addresses in the event that the contract yeah. with you is terminated prior, and there are existing contracts that have been signed and agreed to, that those contracts will be, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what the language would be, but that we talk about, you know, uh, who is responsible yeah. essentially for fulfilling the contract. almost something to the effect of, to the best of everybody's efforts, I'm handing off a complete package to the next person in line as we, you know, whatever, whatever that execution date right. was, and saying, okay, here's what we have to date for this particular and, event. And what we're probably saying, or our attorney's probably saying, is if you're signing something that's completely egregious in right. a contract where you're telling, you know, a bride that she owns the building, you know, after, you know, the, the, the wedding, you know, it's her wedding present to her, something ridiculous like that, right. to make sure that that's not something that the town then is held liable for right. in the event that you're no longer terminated. Not that you have that ability or power to do that anyways, but. Right, because the way, well, that's, that's a great point. I think that, that needs to be in there, but it also, you almost need that assignment language. We almost need to know what that assignment language is or at least agree to the terms of it in the sense that if we terminate mm -hmm. and the assignment occurs through that the operation of that contract and then we have a, an indemnity hold harmless from any and all liability there's there's no way we can go after you if you never return the money now, I'm not saying you do that right. but if you just said well I'm not giving you guys the deposits right. We've agreed to indemnify and hold him harmless for any and all liability for any assigned event. Well, I mean, he might have really done something very serious. Right. And so hold harmless forever. I mean, one can work in the language to say hold harmless except for, you know, uh, egregious. Something along those lines. So, so, something yeah. along uh, mismanagement miss money so on and so forth so I mean we're not gonna we're not out to uh, go after you generally but if you do something really bad like walk away with right. 10 deposits this says doesn't make any difference 
we hold you harmless uh, for any and all liability. Well, that, that isn't really true. Mm -hmm. So it almost has to stay in there. It, I mean, the assignment of contracts only comes into play in the event of termination, correct? I mean, it doesn't actually state right. anywhere else that there's an assignment or the ability to assign the contract. Exactly. Should, so should you become ill or something happens to you, there's no provision in this contract that says what happens if you are unable to fulfill the contract duties, mm -hmm. then it just results in termination, essentially, of the contract. There's no you know, ability for us to almost to reassign to us for a temporary period of time in the event that's needed. So it kind of doesn't address that issue, but it really only deals with termination, which then would fall under 10.2 somewhat on the remedies. And it kind of starts to address the language in there, but it doesn't really completely address the situation that we've been talking about. It just states that, you know, after this notice um, that, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, the manager shall remain liable as here and after provided. I don't really know what that means. Um, you know, but it says, upon such termination, the town may re-enter the property and dispossess the manager and anyone claiming by, through, or under manager by summary proceedings or other lawful process. So that, that's the only tie-in I think I can see to it, but uh, maybe there should be a provision about a temporary, right. you know, just in case there is an issue that does arise. Um, I don't know if, what you guys think about that. There's no, you know, to assign any contracts to the town in the event that, and then what I'd want to see then is if the contracts are assigned to the town, that they're removed from the bonus clause. I mean, essentially, if the town is taking responsibility for those contracts, but for any reason, that that is removed from the calculation of, because you don't have the responsibility, liability, or obligation to do that. Right, because in this, this remedy 10.2, it does say, um, uh, kind of rights of manager under this agreement shall expire and terminate unless the prior dates specify for termination the event or events of default shall have been cured, in which the agreement shall remain in full force and effect. And managers shall remain liable as herein after provided. Um, so you, you know, you have liability upon a default, but this early termination aspect arguably would occur in the event of a default, but maybe not. Um, it's it's somewhat con contradictory language between two two one. Right. And that's my two. that's my point. Is that there? There has to be a a happy medium with with this. Right. Right. I mean, there can be mitigating circumstances where you be liable for something. I think that we probably can just reach back to Lee to say, this is the intent: is that in the event we you may wish to assign right. contracts to us for any reason, and that's not a by termination that we address the liability issue there and then in the event of termination with regard to contracts that are essentially automatically assigned to the town that the liability you know to the the, the manager will work with the town to address the issues and you know at whatever legal I mean there's language. a lot of bad things that can happen I mean there could be double bookings double bookings and, and not have Exercise the proper contracts and not realized mm -hmm. that you've double booked or triple booked some crazy thing, and, mm -hmm. and people show up mm -hmm. and go, "Oh, I'm getting married today," right. and and someone misfiled the contract. I mean, so you can't be held uh, harmless forever and for all circumstances. No, I mean, so no one. No yeah, one. I think his be. point was in the fact that if I was not able to complete and take it to the finish line, I think that's what he was trying right. to say. Right, so right. I think I could probably figure no, it out. No, I, I get that, yeah. Pop, but if yeah. in fact, uh, I, I look at double booking, which would be the horror show of all horror shows, mm. that uh, that you terminated and, and there were multiple weddings booked for the same day. Mm. We didn't know it. Mm -hmm. Now people start showing up. Someone's getting married at Aswamsit. <laughs> <laughs> in the cafeteria. Yeah. 
but but those things can happen. <laughs> so we can do it. So yeah. so, I mean, so I think there's a distinction. I think there's two. There's really two aspects. It's just yeah. an assignment through termination, mm -hmm. right? And then there's assignment with consent of both parties. Correct. Right. Where that's the one that you spoke of, where mm -hmm. something happens to you, where you got to step out for yeah. a reason and, right. and we say okay well we'll work with you we're gonna do what we can to get through this and yeah. right. so maybe the direction we'll give the attorneys is to kind of do some framework where the assignment through termination is a different standard of liability than the assignment with consent of both parties right Makes sense. Right. But, but I know the language of hold harmless forever for all circumstances doesn't work in anyone's book. Yeah, that's that's that doesn't work. You always ask for it. I mean, it has to be egregious uh, uh, <coughs> fault, like fault of you. you know. <laughs> right. Okay, so we'll move on from that one. Um, so I'm on page three. Did anybody have any questions about any I, of this? I do on three. Um, the only thing, and it's this is just a an irk on the language um, for the management fee doesn't actually state and maybe there's there's just no definitions per se that it doesn't say who's paying whom it's not clear I mean I I know what's happening is that uh, at least I thought I was actually at first but um, you know we're paying you the management fee um, just that language just wasn't as clear as I wanted it to be um, and then the other piece was really related to uh, 3.4 with the record keeping. And just because, of course, I'm a, a CPA and an auditor, mm -hmm. um, that what I think would be helpful is to have open books and records from the Parks Department, books and records, which they are, they're public records anyways. But I know it talks about that the manager shall provide the town with an annual report reflecting all such information. and. The only um, piece with that, and not that I ever think that anybody is doing anything, um, although I, I am a certified fraud examiner as well, so, um, but the fact that you hold the liquor license contract as well, which then leads to potential additional revenues, which then leads to the additional bonus, mm -hmm. just to, you know, I don't need all the books and records, or nor would I ever ask that of the bartending service, mm -hmm. but just to make sure that there is a reconciliation process that we're we're comfortable with that so I just didn't think that the record keeping language was enough um, you know and I think that it should go both ways that you have full access to the general ledger I mean not that you don't through public right. records request but I think that's kind of onerous sure. because I'd want you to make sure that you're comfortable also mm -hmm. with all the ins and outs that we're reporting back to you I mean I would think that you would reconcile it anyways but I just know that most of the time I see a little bit more language related to the right. opening of the books and records than and what you'd this stipulates. You'd want it to be stipulates. more than annual. It, more than annual. I think, book. yeah, I think, right. I mean, it does say. Subject to audit any time. Yeah, just that, you know, it's exactly. Yeah, um, sure. That you're free to come in and take a look at anything and everything that you want to make sure if your records don't jive with our records. Sure. Um, because we're getting 20% of the catering fee that's mm -hmm. not going through you at all. So that, but you're getting the bonus based upon that too. So to well, protect I'm, you. I'm actually going to be collecting the money from the caterers. Okay, so you're collecting that and then remitting it too. Okay. So we have a one control point. Okay. All right. So you want Do that you have language? suggested language? Um, I can probably come up with some. I don't know that I can. Um, so let me. No, you don't have to do it now, but if you yeah. if you have some suggested language, yeah. maybe you can email it to Rita and she can forward it along to Lee. Okay. Right. Um, I'm going to send my notes relative to what we've discussed to Rita tomorrow okay. to okay. send along to Lee. And if you want to just send an email, she can forward that too. Okay, sure. Okay, any other questions about page three? Yeah. Oh, wait. So did Hold you on. want something put in there about uh, that we're paying him? I'm just reading the beginning. Yeah, I have a so note. I have a note for okay. that. Yeah. Right. So actually, so um, it should say at, at three one, the management she sh fee shall be three thousand dollars per month and, paid by town to manager. And also on three three, <laughs> I think that it's important um, for everybody also, where it says the manager is expected to at a minimum meet the prior year's revenues at least specify which revenues that refers to 
And I know that then there's a schedule in the back and it talks about the 160 and it kind of gets there, but it's not memorialized in this contract because there's a number of different revenues that go in and you know there is the field rental. You're not responsible for that, right, but you're responsible for the event rental. Um, you know, I know it says not custodial services fee, but I, I would almost want to enumerate each. Aspect yeah, of the I revenue. think that that would be a better way to put it in there. List so that, these five. Yeah, uh, okay. and that's why I want you to have access to the books and records in case right. there's a misclassification sure. of any of those items of revenue as well. All right, I have a note relative to that um, on here. Anything else? Um, You're not reading this now, are you? No, that, no, because now that we've talked about that piece, then I'm going back to my notes. I have no, notes. No, I know. I'm she has notes blue. Today. See, <laughs> I don't have I a know, black I pen. It. I understand. <laughs> Jeez, it's just a joke. <laughs> All right, page four. Anything? Nope. Five? Uh, let's see. So is that really, as we just talked about, 6-3, now it says the caterers and bartenders will be paid by the party booking the event? That's correct, right? You're just yeah. then... Um, collecting that correct now the rental fees are paid to the town by the party is that correct or so we're collecting all the fees and submitting it one time okay for the rent in the revenue sharing between the caterers and the bar service okay on a per event basis and we, we did check with Todd hat we met with Todd right. yep okay because we, we hope each event is going to show everything for that wedding which Todd likes by event. He's going to collect everything and break it down. Okay. I'm just thinking about cancellations of events, um, deposits, what happens in the event. That would be addressed in the contract language of each and every event that's happening. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, seven, so next page is six, and at the top is seven one. There was a note from the attorney. So this um, is a repair and maintenance clause. Right. Um, and the note here is that you'd like to be able to fix your, these issues yourself. Um, the comment from town council was that that's okay, but she wanted to, or he, sorry, Lisa, he, <laughs> he was a she. Um, it said, throughout the term of this agreement, unless otherwise agreed by the town, manager at its sole cost and expense shall be responsible for any damage to the property occurring during events, repairs or replacement of the property, so damage shall be performed by the town and the cost thereof shall be reimbursed by the manager. So what, what he's trying to do is, is um, give you the ability to do the repairs yourself if the town's okay with it. Right. Is that okay? Mm hmm Okay. So. Which you could repair at much less cost, probably. Totally. No prevailing wage. <laughs> Minor stuff you fix, major stuff you say. Jesus, yep. Nate, what am I going to do? <clears throat> um, on the same page, we have 8-1, uh, liability insurance. Did you um, run this by our insurance guy? Yes. Okay. John has uh, given me the liability amounts. Okay, perfect. Uh, any other comments or questions on six? All right, seven. Um, um, I guess. You on six? No, I, yeah, I think just on six. I think I just want to get this. Um, as we move to the next agenda item, which is the liquor license or the ability to have it, but the liquor license is the annual license that we approve, um, which is January to December. But uh, we can get to that at that point if we want to change the dates on it to coincide with the actual license. We can't. You can't coincide. 
Yeah. No, because the, the liquor license itself, though, is January to December, right? Right. That's, that's, that's what I mean. It's the No, no, no. It's not that. It's the contract itself. So the second piece that we have, because this provision, in theory, you could have a liquor license, but you might not have an agreement to be able to do it, and then, which we don't have right now, which means, I guess it's just running as it is, but it's not kind of, it's not all tied together, I think, you know? Because the dates are different. And we do want the Park Commission, we all want to tie it together, but because of the current contract we have, it allows for just a one-year effective um, date. So when... What's that, the second one? The, okay. The yeah, we can get to that one. Okay. It's, not, it's not involved in here. I just wanted to make sure that that clause that talks about that you can't have beverages served or consumed in the property unless you have a valid and current license. So you have it. It's just then we have this other contract that doesn't necessarily, it expires in May every year. Okay. So. I'm good. Okay. Uh, all right, so page seven is the gross negligence clause. So the response we got from council is uh, really uh, requesting not to delete gross negligence and, and the reason why and it, it really has to do with that language mirrors a state statute that limits town liability to $100,000. So if you change that language, we're no longer get the protection of mass tort law. Okay. So, um, so we're requesting that gross stay in there, um, but the second half of this provision, the any injuries caused by town's removal or failure to remove snow and ice shall be the sole obligation of the town and not the manager, um, is reasonable. So he's okay with that because we're agreeing to take on that liability Correct. to do it. Well, you limit yourself by having the gross in there. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So that the liability is, is capped at the statutory $100,000. Um, is that good with you? That's fine. Okay. Let's see. All right. Anything else on that page? I guess the only question on that, um, with regard to the repairs and maintenance, and the snow removal uh, do we I mean I know that we're saying that if there's an issue that happens in this property damage occurring during an event I mean I don't think the intent is that you know lo and behold you've got an event and an ice dam you know forms and starts leaking in the event uh, who's responsible for that uh, we that would be under the town because we own the building Right. Our property right. liability. Right, but right. The, the, right. The, 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 lang the language, if you did it, would have to be, Bill would have to alert us. I mean, we're not in there inspecting the building all the time. You are. Correct. I mean, you're the, uh, not the owner of the building, but the right. user of the building permanently. D damage, I think, damage being your responsibility, it says um, during events, is damage caused by, by patrons in the event, in right? The event, Tripping not over a broken chair. Right. Is right. that right. clear enough? Does it need to be more clear? That's the only piece because I just don't like specifically because later on we say, oh, by the way, if we fail to remove snow and ice, <coughs> then any injuries, you know, we'll pay for. But if we don't fail to remove snow and ice and the event, you know, the the roof collapses during the event. Could somebody come after you for something that wasn't the intent of what <coughs> we had here? That, that's all that I'm concerned with, is it's just not specific to that. I think that you could just change the language in the Repairs and Maintenance Clause just to say, shall be responsible for any damage to the property occurring during and on, you know, uh, due to the event or the patrons or, you know, something <coughs> of that. You know, like if there happens to be a natural disaster that happens at the exact same time well, we, right, as an event, right, I just don't we, want. We do, right, we talk about the event, but if he if he left the water on in the sink and it was blocked, right, because they threw all the leftovers in there mm -hmm. for something, 
and the place flooded. That's due to the event. Well, right? Or well, well, I don't what's know. the I mean, it could be due to anything. Who the hell knows? Uh, uh, I mean, it could be a leaky roof. We no, we don't know. Right. You, you need to call us. So the the language gets really crazy uh, of you know uh, if the roof's leaking and he doesn't call us it turns into a horror show yeah i just if he calls us i mean we have a we have a responsibility to get down there in 24 hours or hours whatever the severity of the problem is yeah i i think we we know what we're intending on it i just don't you know i know right. we're not around forever as a board so you know i just don't want the the language sure. to ever come up as an issue as right. to say that I, right. look, look this actually it. happened during an right. event so right. guess the, what the event is only people i look at it as either falling tripping over something it's that is he didn't maintain the <coughs> tables didn't maintain the chairs right if the if the damage would have occurred if the event never happened that's not what the intent is you know it's only damage that occurs on behalf of or because of or ancillary to having an event that's causing the damage right including damage that occurs after an event if it's a but delayed you know that can be attributed to the negligence the event. of right of right employee right right but our employees <clears throat> would be in there if we did not have an event manager for a leaky roof so some somewhere the person leasing the building for the want of a better word needs to notify us mm -hmm. and we have a responsibility to fix it quick mm -hmm. i look at that as a, as a as a real potential problem do we have that language in uh, i will say in the rental for the the old library I mean that. That's you know, I mean problem. that's what we've been doing I mean, by oven. practice. You're right. But you leave the oven on and the place burns. I right. Mean, that's that, a I different mean, that, story. That's, then that's the problem we have. Mm -hmm. For us, it would be water damage. Where do you get that? Heat is left on. Yeah. I mean, well, I think it's all. I mean, there's other language. If we're all in agreement right. that that's the intent, that we can see if we can get some language to kind yeah, of beef that up. And what I'll do is I'll in my email I'll I'll suggest that they maybe differentiate. You know, obviously, damage caused by force majeure. You know, act of God. That's beyond the scope of this. But anything that is a result of an event, or um, I would certainly like them to notify us <coughs> that if there's a problem in the building, right. as soon mm -hmm. as known. Yep. I mean, that that's the key to it. Yep. And I may say, Nicole does call Nate. If some issues have come up mm -hmm. um, over the summer, and Nicole has reached out. Okay to Nate right away. Okay, so I, I think I have the gist of that to okay. convey. That That's another piece that the attorneys can work through. Um, all right, so let me see here. All right, so page eight, no, seven we did. Anything on eight? No. All right, nine. Anything on nine? I have notes, but I don't even know what I meant by it. We've been sorry right. been messing around with the five and ten days, but I don't know yep. where we. Yeah. So, off. right. So the attorney, uh, uh, Lee Smith, said. Uh, relative to 101 d the request to extend time to cure from five to ten oh, days I do know but keep right, hold, going please. with that one no. it's not yeah. unreasonable however this would be considered a business decision so I, I don't I, I don't have a problem with it going to ten days right. that's fine yeah I'm <coughs> okay with that too um, so 101 a it says a breach of agreement it says it's a breach, an event of default, if manager shall fail to pay as and when due, any payment due under this agreement. And I had circled it and I said, what would this even be? Because under this agreement, there's nothing that you're paying us. Um, because it's not, it's not contained within this agreement. Any kind of ancillary, like you're collecting the funds and remitting them to us. So it's just not tied in together to this agreement that I see. 
and maybe it it is in through but it doesn't state mm -hmm. this this agreement doesn't talk about you paying like as we talked about before how you're going to reconcile and cut a check and send it to the town but it i don't know if it needs to reference a secondary agreement or reference article 5 in relation to you know number 10 Maybe I mean it, it does say collect all charges from users and vendors and right. remit to pa town, so maybe that's what it's referring to. I just had a hard time kind of tying it back. Wh which one is that? Five what? Five ten, page four. I guess maybe that maybe it's just referring back to five ten. What would be the normal time frame of that? It would be after the event. Well, we talk about doing every two weeks. Right. Uh, Todd wanted him to turn okay, over every all right. two weeks. Are you okay with us putting in a time frame of two weeks? Sure. Sure. Why not? I mean, I think that well, clears up your point because yeah, if. But make sure it's two weeks after you get. Uh, what you could. Yeah. The 15th, the 15th, and 30th, whatever's I, accumulated. Is the contract going to require, I assume, a 50% upfront deposit or some deposit upfront and then full payment? on the date of the event. Yeah. So it must be paid prior to the event taking place. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, that I mean that would that would solve your problem with yep. there's a thirty if for some reason you didn't you missed a payment and it went beyond thirty days, then that's considered a default. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So do the attorneys still get paid for doing the contract? If, <laughs> if we make doing, all the changes, you, you're doing it all. Yes. <laughs> a new career path. Always. Always. They'll have ten questions they for always get one paid. of these changes. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. Mm. Well, the the rest of it is all the legal stuff that I don't even bother looking at. Okay. No. So I don't understand it. <laughs> all right. What was that? Was yeah. what page? That was, was that? page nine, ten, one A. So, yeah, that was it for town council, and I don't think I, I saw anything else. I had a question about, um, so, did you have anything else? No. This no. is uh, contract by committee. It's the easiest way to get it done, right? But no, I think we we made good headway today tonight, so I appreciate you coming in. Absolutely. And, um, this is a kind of a necessary evil. But I'll coordinate getting these comments to Rita, and then Mitzi can forward along that language relative to that provision that she had a, a question about. We'll get this stuff over to to Lee Smith and ask him to reach out to your attorney to coordinate okay. finalizing the language. Anything else for agenda item one? All right. Agenda item number two is to Review, vote, and vote to renew the contract for bartending services at Loon Pond Lodge. Aaron, could I just ask one question on this? So by the time uh, Lee Smith and Bill's attorney works it out... Um, the next year. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't think we'll have it ready for October 11th, but then you're not having another meeting until November 1st to vote to Didn't, sign the contract? Are we having one on the 18th now and the 20th? Well, that's yeah. later on to be determined. <laughs> yes, well, you would. You we would. Can, you would. can approve it subject to changes uh, so we don't have to reconvene. And, and yeah. that may not be acceptable to either attorney. Right. So No, no well, one attorneys, it probably won't be. We, um, we'll deal with that. I mean, if we have to just have a meeting for the sake okay. of getting All together right. and, yeah. and, yeah. and just fine. doing one agenda item, kind of like tonight, except yep. drone to <laughs> 10. Um, we can do that on the fly. So we, Thanks. Mm -hmm. at the very least, um, typically John and I are in town mm -hmm. during right. the day and we can schedule a meeting sure. just to approve a contract and knowing that Mitzi is good with the language, we can, we can mm -hmm. be as timely as possible with it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Okay, so the effective date of the renewal would be May 14th, uh, 2017, with an expiration date of May 14th, 2018. So 
So we have a copy of the document here. Did anybody have any questions? Because then I believe when it comes yes, to so next May, we could try to coordinate, depending on what the dates are on the event manager contract, to try to. I mean, why? I, I would think that maybe we'd want the dates, maybe it should be a June 30th to June 30th, only for bookkeeping reconciliation our purposes, books. you know, our books and records yeah. makes it easier, or a 1231, one or the other, I mean, to make it easier on yours. Yeah. Um, just because I don't, I can't even see the execution date on the one we just talked about. Right. Like right, it, we've already missed the date anyway, right. so we, just we can put them reconcile together. it for the sake of having it be easier. The same now or next on May fourteenth of next. No, right now. I, because the the current contract only allowed for one year. So if you go out past. <laughs> Right. Do we need an RFP? Is that the problem? No, no. But the extension in the current contract that expired last May, only a... Right. right. So there was no contract from May 14th until... No, ever. June Still. 30th. Right, the, remember the park had said, let's hold off because we thought... Right. We were going to have an event manager contract yeah. sooner. Um, back, back to the fee for services, do, do we say when the payment is expected back to that or it's a couple of weeks after the event we're total we're monthly to sales turning it at, right it do you want to include this that is, in that well no i know mitzi was always on the patrol about uh, when we get paid well, but it doesn't address it which no, is but, okay but right now i mean you're reconciling monthly sales that are occurring there and your so now you've got another step of sales by events as opposed to sales by month. No, because they're right? still no, they're done by event. It's just we send once a month. We're mm -hmm. so you already are right. doing that anyways. Right. So yeah. it's not going to be any big imposition on you to no. get, reconcile that. It's just yep. a matter of carrying sure. those bar sales onto the individual sheet for each event now. So we'll have those sources of revenue: the rental, the bar, and then the catering fee. Okay. We'll get them on one fee, for, so each event will be able to see what it actually generates. Okay. Which is something we've never been able to do out there, or hasn't been done. We could extend this agreement through June thirtieth and leave the start date May 14th, right? That way it covers right. back. Then from, I guess, as you know what I the mean? start date today until to June year, 30th, right? right? Oh. Well, it says that we can only extend it for one year. What does that matter? Can't we just amend the agreement now? Well, no, that's. You can do whatever you want. Right, this right? is the <laughs> amendment to the agreement. We amend the amendment? Mm -hmm. To put, I mean, dates that make sense? No, I, we totally should. No, my okay. suggestion yeah. was, though, if, if you want to leave it May 14th, 2017 for yeah, the start date, 30th, so that 2018. we can say that the contract was in place through the whole time yeah. you were doing business with the town, which I think is what yeah. you're trying to do, just extend it to June 30th so just that that way it lines up with the town's uh, accounting yeah. for the fiscal year. Can you make that change now? So it just be uh, the agreement on the word document. So it say this that, agreement. That makes sense. Yeah. So this agreement shall be in effect from <clears throat> the original expiration date, May fourteenth, twenty seventeen, until June, through right. June thirtieth, twenty eighteen. Yeah. Twenty. Through. Yeah. Just get rid of the one here. Twenty eighteen. Print them out. Thirtieth, twenty eighteen. Like weddings, book them two years ahead. And for the next contract, are we going to try to do like the cycle for the liquor license? Right. So go from like July June. 1st, 18 to December 31st, like 19? That would probably make sense. I think that when we get this squared away, which is agenda, the first item, that we want it to be calendar year, anyways. So maybe this one, should we just put this one through December, December 31st? 31st. 2018. And just do it from there. Yeah. Sure. Because sure. then we can line up the other one. Yeah. December 31st, yeah, 2018. 
provided we issue a liquor license for 2018. Right. <laughs> At least the two will be on the same date. Right. And ultimately get to. Correct. And then that way it's a good trigger for us to ensure that as we come up to our annual license renewals Correct. every year that we're also renewing the contract yeah. with you for both services. Okay. All right, hang on a second. That's correct. Just, uh, Start doing math on this one too. Tracy, there's also this this little thing too. Just strike this recitation. Okay. So I, I just asked Tracy to, in the recitation, the second paragraph, whereas the parties <coughs> to amend the agreement by executing the town's option. In the original agreement to extend the agreement. Yep. For a period of one year. I just had to take that out. Yep. Yep. Uh, any other questions about this? The we can revisit this if we need to. I'm okay with it, but just number four down here where it just says together with the other components of the agreement documents constitutes the entire agreement between the parties. No other agreements other than those incorporated herein. I'm okay with that because you've set up a separate LLC anyways for the event management, so it's not going to have any impact anyway, so I'm good. Okay. I just answered my own question. Yeah. Excellent. I'd like to obtain a motion to approve the extension, or I should say the amendment to the agreement between the town of Lakeville and the bartending service of New England LLC, as discussed. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. It's unanimous. for the copy. Sure. There's one. Get you. Do we you sell go. alcohol at Winterfest? We do. Yeah. We do. No? Just curious. And I'm uh, I'm looking forward to solidifying that date for Winterfest <laughs> with our new event manager. <laughs> yeah, can't book a wedding for Winterfest. <laughs> well, you can keep that. Okay, thank okay. you. You have the date you want to give it? Yeah, I, I do. Buy, I gave it to Nicole. She right. said it was tentative. <laughs> Bill, do you have any other yeah. questions from us? None at the time. No? All right. Thanks again for coming in. I appreciate nice it. Nice to meet you all. This is the best Thank way you. to get it done. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions for me? Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Agenda item number three update on solar canopies at the commuter rail station. We are putting together a letter to Secretary Pollock per Keiko's email regarding the selectmen's concerns relative to this project at the MBTA parking lot. I have your revised letter, Aaron. Okay. Um. So, uh, let me give the backstory on this. This came about um, recently, fairly recently when the Middleborough option, new Middleborough commuter rail station, abandoning the Lakeville station, uh, came about in the consideration of 
using Lakeville simply for the Cape Cod Flyer and other such nonsense that they dream up at the State House relative to uh, making our lives miserable here in Lakeville with their dreams of an urban center starting in, say, Portland, Maine and ending somewhere south of Washington, D.C., turning all these wonderful little towns into pavement and parking lots and train stations. Well, now there'll be train stations, parking lots with solar canopies on them. That's just what everybody that lives in one of those apartments wants to look at. As if looking at a pile of cars isn't bad enough. So, at that point in time, we had received correspondence from, where is it, Mass DOT, uh, September 8th, as part of their efforts to make MBTA more sustainable. They've contracted with uh, a company to design and build solar canopies over parking spaces in certain selected commuter rail and MBTA parking lots and garages. I'm writing you to inform you that the MBTA solar array project for Middleborough Lakeville Station will begin in October, November 2017 timeframe. This solar project is part of the larger MBTA effort to reduce greenhouse gas, em gas emissions. I don't see how that's even possible. They're not powering the train with the electricity, the electricity that they're generating. Additionally, solar canopies are anticipated to improve snow removal and lighting while decreasing maintenance costs and making available solar credits in lieu of taxes to municipalities. So this goes on and on. And this was the first uh, Rick Cologne was the was the guy that signed it. This is the first we heard of it was um, at the beginning of September. Um, he does go on to say that he's, they've been in touch with the Lakeville Assessor's Office regarding municipal benefits associated with projects and plans <coughs> and call for providing payments in lieu of taxes to the town. Um, if we have any questions, please call Rick. Have you called Rick? Did you ever talk to Rick? No, but I met with Haral today about... Okay. So, yeah, we'll talk yeah, about that in no. a second. So, we that's the backstory to this, is that we have uh, what I would view a unilateral activity by the state, surprise, surprise, relative to the parking lot that they do own. The MBTA does own the parking lot. Um, but this, don't forget, this is the, the part of town that was um, developed and designed with the help of regional planning agencies and the state to turn it into a, a kind of their... Smart growth their overlay district. Smart growth, um, their, the, um, I don't even know what you call Body it. Yeah. Well, no, no, it, I mean the smart growth, but the um, kind of the, the pilot, the test case of, of this. I mean, there's been a lot more smart growth since then, but this was one of the early ones. Um, so I think we're all aware of it. We all want to react to this, and we want to say, hey, wait a second. We have some concerns. What we want to do is set up a meeting with, with state officials, DOT people, for the sake of having a conversation about this. And I think some of the issues that that have been raised, uh, John raised them, um, you know, in the public, they were they were published in the newspaper. One of the big concerns, of course, is, is will we get the 40S money if, oh no, that's, I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked on that other issue with the, with where the, the, um, the train's going. Um, so specific to this, this I, Rita had written a draft letter and I added some stuff that specifically I had issue with. Um, so the first is, of course, is that the um, the parking lot, of course, is, is surrounded by residential apartments. We spent all this time planning it. That's obviously a big problem. Um, I'm also concerned with the safety and the aesthetics of the canopy and the overall benefit analysis of such a project. 
What I mean by that is we have um, a claim that these things are going to somehow improve safety or do something or, or fix themselves, but uh, honestly, they're, they're not going to do any of that. Um, and then there's a claim, of course, of, of cutting down on greenhouse emissions. I don't really know how that happens. If you create solar energy, you're not adding any additional greenhouse gases, but how are you cutting down on them unless the power is being used to power trains? But it isn't. So I think that we, and that's just my general concerns. If either of you have additional concerns to add to this letter, let's do it and get this letter out. And also I would encourage you, Rita, to call this Rick Cologne guy mm -hmm. and say, yeah, we have a problem with it and we're sending a letter to Stephanie Pollack to explain what, why we don't want this. Um, well, and if I may, when Keiko called me, she says, you know, the state's <coughs> saying they're almost finalizing an agreement with our assessors, you know. Right. You know, what's Yeah, up? so that's the other piece of it is that he, he mentions in the letter that he's been in touch with the assessors and they heard from them, I think, once and there's never been any follow-up. Well, I tried to get a copy of that letter and I met with Haral today. They received a letter in March, um, and the assessors reviewed it. Harald um, sent, he's come up with a form for, that he's used in, um, on 30 other different solar farms. He came up with this form himself that ha asks all these questions in order to assess it. He sent that form off in March, never heard back from Omni, and then out of the blue, um, he starts getting calls from uh, all these other communities because Haral said that no other community responded except Lakeville. So he took, Omni took that form that Haral had formulated for the Lakeville Board of Assessors and distributed it to all 36 communities. And they all called up Haral saying, what are you, subcontracting with Omni? You know, and Haral immediately sent off an email. That was just for the town of Lakeville. And not until June did he receive that form back. And so in June, I did find the Board of Assessors minutes that um, they've come up with um, an amount in a pilot agreement, which will have to come before the Board of Selectmen on the final agreement. But all of a sudden, they're in a hurry now to finalize it in, just in the last couple of weeks. So I wanted to add something in there that... Are we receiving any tax payments on that property from the MBTA? For the I don't think itself? I don't think the is state it assessed is at exempt. anything? Can you look up the field card for that? Because it says on their lovely letter that they sent to us that they would be providing, you know, in theory, solar credits as a well in the pilot, pilot. agreement it will be um, but, you know, I make solar credits in lieu of taxes to municipalities. So are they paying us something now for the property? And she'll look up. Um, or are they looking look to offset the personal property tax on the solar canopies with solar credits, right. such that they want to put it there, and it's only for, uh, and so they could be assessed for personal property taxes, but not for actual property taxes on the land itself no, because it be happens it. to be owned is it leased is that why is the no. equipment leased by MBTA by is it Omni's equipment that's being leased by the MBTA I don't know that because that goes back to the same the Verizon issue on the because right property. the question would be you know is that really the proper way to assess it that's a question for Harald is it an income valuation that we should be using and not Whatever you know, I don't know what his formula looked like when he was assessing. And he had personal nothing property in the, tax the office in Lakeville. He didn't have his regular letter. He was going to have the, the the thing that they sent back. I asked him to yeah. forward it to me, uh, but he said everything was in his Lemonster office. Sure. So right. Well, yeah, when you get it forwarded to all of us so we can review it, um, because I think you know this this speaks to a bigger theme too. And and right here in the local newspaper, it says selectman irked. Love that word, irked. <laughs> by lack of communication by Mass DOT. So this was was in the um, the Enterprise, the Thursday, September twenty eighth, two 
2017 Enterprise. <clears throat> and it's talking specifically about the selectmen of Middleborough being irked by the Mass DOT in relation to the location of the proposed station in Middleborough. But this is part of a bigger theme here where the Mass DOT is sending us letters relative to solar farms, and it's the first we've heard of it. Now, you could say, well, they contacted the assessors, but if the Board of Selectmen are the ones that do the pilot, mm -hmm. and they want to get started in October, and it's October, we haven't even, we don't even have it on an agenda. They were surveying today. Someone was out there surveying right. at the train station today. Right. So they're already moving forward. Again, unilateral state action mm -hmm. for the benefit of the state without any sort of public hearing so that people of Lakeville and surrounding community, communities can voice their concern. But it's sounds, just, it sounds it like our new roundabout. And they went out too. to. That's not coming. They went out to bid for this. Not the rotary, uh, the roundabout. Washed that. The roundabout. The RFP went out in the beginning of the year. And they never even informed us that they that's what they right. were doing. So the RFP went out specifically stating or citing the Middleborough Lakeville station all for a solar stations. array, all 36, oh, yeah. without informing any of the member communities. Right. Well, that, that goes to all it's the cases that Nate found, too, which is pretty yeah. much we have jurisdiction over whatever we want to do on this land that we own, even though it happens to be within your town, that your zoning yep. um, rules, right. bylaws, don't actually apply to us. Unless the big question I had was, if that station goes fallow, then does that actually, does that mean because it talks about it being used for mass transit purposes, if it doesn't exist for mass transit purposes, do we regain zoning control over it? Well, I think, I think the ploy is to have it as an overflow parking lot. I'll say that the Cape Cod Flyer uh, is going to be there. But it's but, still an but active station. But we don't station, care if it's but. in the Middleborough station, but. I don't know. I understand that we're addressing the Lakeville assessor's involvement because it was mentioned in their letter. But to me, that has nothing to do with whether we do or don't want solar at the parking lot. But I had talked to Mike Rodericks and, and voiced our concern that uh, here we go of uh, we're going to put solar panels and there were no permitting and there were no meeting public meetings in the town of Lakeville. Mike indicated if you don't want the solar panels we're not going to put them in. Now that having said that he's not part of the mass DOT but I, I had uh, suggested that we perhaps do a cease and desist to uh, the MBTA and carbon copy uh, the solar panel installer. And that would certainly get their attention That's true. also. Whether whether it holds water or not, mm -hmm. uh, it's one can all... a pretty clear shot across the bow, though. We one, don't one want can, this without... Right, right. right. I, so, I agree so with that. Process. I, I, think, I think that you should do a, a cease and desist. Now, one can say maybe it, it doesn't... They don't fall under the control of the town, but we believe that you need to permit it. Right. Uh, but at least you can put it out and, there. And a, a meeting with them, with a cease and desist, would probably get their attention. Yeah, More than I agree. a letter yep. to Stephanie Pollock that uh, it, it can be filed away for the next uh, right. four months. They'll say they never got it. Sure. But, I mean, if I talked to Mike and he said, if you don't want the solar farm, you shouldn't have it. If I talk to uh, to Middleborough Gas and Electric, they're treating them just as they would if you were installing mm -hmm. solar. They don't give an opinion as to whether it's right. appropriate or not appropriate mm -hmm. to do. Uh, but they did give me some numbers. I mean, Middleborough Gas and Electric at 12 and a half cents a kilowatt is not a proponent of solar farms mm -hmm. generally uh, because they buy it much cheaper than solar costs. Uh, right, and that talks about, and that that speaks to the cost benefit right. analysis. So, yeah. What's so, the net Right, gain? so the part that the the assessors are involved, the, the second to the last sentence, which we carried from readers, um, you know, the assessors reach out for them for additional information and never received a response. 
I don't know without having read their questions, did they ask for a response and things right. like that. Right. So I, I don't want to get right. I don't want to get called in trying to uh, uh, defend what the assessors did or didn't so, do. I don't care what the assessors have done so far. Right. Okay. I, I, I'm just. I don't mind. Um, we're just having that discussion. Yep. Well, uh, just because he's dealing with the assessors, it isn't a done deal. They also wrote a check for $18,000 to Middleborough Gas and Electric for the feasibility study of how to hook it up, how to put the solar panel inventory onto the grid. And that's a four to six week period to do that. I'm, I'm in favor of that plan to really get the attention and to try to enact our local zoning right. ordinances so, so and bylaws and I, and maybe it will fail and that's okay but right. at least you know we get the attention and I'm happy right. to go to right. yeah to town so, council so, to so have I them would I would suggest it. that we have a building uh, commissioner uh, Nate Dowling do a cease Is and that desist how we do it? Okay. I, I Through you. recommend a, a three prong a triple prong approach a trident if you will okay um, Is someone going to go strap themselves to the parking lot <laughs> to avoid no, building no, 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 of the yeah, canopy? Jamie to the That's oak tree. That's not me. <laughs> the There's no more already, trees. It's all paved. <laughs> Turning it into a megaopolis. <laughs> all right, so. Can I borrow Rita for one minute? Hold, please. Uh, Bob, I don't want to have to call the police to have you thrown <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> Selectment meetings have passed. <laughs> I was threatened to uh, be thrown out by the police. Okay, so tier one, uh, tier one, prong one is let's send this letter. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. So we'll get rid of this yes. part about the assessors because I think it dilutes the message. Yeah. Like yeah. You said. Right. Right. We want to try to meet with the DOT person if she'll meet with us. On this, we should CC Mike. Rodericks. Do do we want to okay, copy though. and the other guy? Do we want to um, bring this Rick. to District Four too? Like, do you want to copy? Is it Pam Hasner at District Four? Just we, 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 for Mass DOT to make her locally aware. I know this is a Boston issue. I don't I, know that we need no, to. No, and, and carbon copy also. Uh, uh, Jackie Crowley from uh, Middleborough Gas and Electric, so and she knows what we're doing. Okay. Uh, yep. And then that's enough carbon and copies. Yes. Right, so that, that's step one. Okay. Yep. Um, step two is as simple as calling this Rick guy. Yep. Because his letter does say if you have call any me. questions, call him. So we can instruct Rita to give him a ring and say, yep. he was. We want to talk about this. The selectmen have concerns. Yep. You're going to get a letter yep. that outlines them, and that's an issue. Step three should be the cease and desist from our building commissioner that says uh, we're not we're not going to stand for this. Or you you can massage that language. No, right, but right. It just is. Um, right. Let's have some communication because if you can do this unilaterally through state law, good for you. But you still should be a good neighbor and you still should let us know what you're intending on doing because we're the ones that have to answer the phone calls. Um, so cease and desist. So a three three tiered, three prong yep. strategy, mm -hmm. trouble hook. Paula, let a call Rick because you were out of the room. I'm Call calling Rick. Rick yeah. Yep. Tell him we have concerns. We should meet with him, and cease and desist. Number yep. three. Yep. Well, we're trying to meet with Secretary. Well, yeah. Pollack. Just tell him that we've. Well, right. No. Okay. Well, with well, right. Secretary Pollock. Yeah. But if he wants to sit in on the meeting, yeah. if they even grant us one, this is like the the tiny nation state sending an emissary to the the <laughs> emperor right. of the world and right. saying, "You must meet with me." Right. Right. In the in the <laughs> right. They're going to like you say, they right, just file right, it. Away. They'll just right, some right. The cease and desist we want to give to. That's number three. No, no yeah. Vetus there. The, yeah. the install. Omni yes. Omni Navitas. And what was number two? Call Rick. Tell, was tell, him, one. tell him we've sent a letter just to Stephanie. Scrap Pollock. this piece about the assessors because we don't want to dilute okay. the message. And and this is the um, CCs. We want to CC Rodericks, okay. Keiko, Rick, 
uh, and Jackie Crowley. Oh, okay. Yeah. I want everybody to know we're just pleased. I did check the value on the MBTA parking lot is five hundred and seventy nine thousand six hundred. We cannot find a tax bill, and it doesn't say any tax exempt on it. So we'll have to find out tomorrow mm -hmm. whether or not they do pay. Right. I assume the MBTA is tax exempt, and I don't know if that's in our pilot payment for all state-owned land that we receive annually, minimal amount. Uh, so we'll check on that. <laughs> okay. You can just bring in some giant trees that will just shade <laughs> the entire parking lot after the solar canopies are up. <laughs> and that will make a better environmental impact. Uh, hmm. Okay. Thanks, Nate. Uh, All right. Oh, mitigation. In a tonight. similar vein, we preparing for a meeting, hopefully with. Uh, Mass DOT regarding the movement or the relocation of the Middleborough Lakeville commuter rail station to Middleborough. Um, as this story reported, the Middleborough selectmen are not happy about it. I think in aggregate, they don't want. Uh, they don't want it, and I think ironically, we don't want it either because, like I said earlier, we've built a whole development, or I should say we've allowed a whole development to be built for the sake of mass transit being the cornerstone of that development. And if that train is not running from that spot, it opens up a whole new can of worms with issues that we don't want to deal with. Um, so we should talk about what we want uh, from from this potential situation. I mean, I think ideally nobody, I shouldn't speak for you too, but my impression is that we don't want to even see the commuter rail extend down beyond where it is. That, from a Lakeville perspective, is just going to bring more traffic and congestion into Lakeville, even if it's trains that are doing it. Train traffic is is annoying. It's loud, and it's a dis disruption anywhere that train crosses a street. You have to sit and wait for that stupid train to go by, that empty train <laughs> with nobody in it from the city of New Bedford and Fall River, except Mayor ex Mayor Lang, former Mayor Lang. He'll be on it every day. He's a proponent. So I think, generally speaking, we're not for the project. But if this project is moving forward, we've been advised by uh, our state rep to think about what mitigation we would want to see happen uh, for the sake of offsetting the negative impact that will, will occur. Um, so, all right, can I ask a question? Yes. Are we considering the impact right. of all of the accelerated and like train crossings that will happen just from south coast rail or from moving the station and or both because there's kind of two issues one is just in general with south coast rail where if you're upgrading the freight lines and now all of the lines that have the csx train that goes through you know twice a day will now have all of the trains coming through from taunton fall river and new bedford you know coming up through the town itself at all of those intersections on right. you know whatever that is southworth or um south precinct um yeah. leonard you know those streets taunton where Nav. taunton Ave, where it's all going to cross over and it's going to disrupt that traffic so that's kind of a secondary piece to consider when we think about this versus the impact of just shutting down the existing commuter station and i think that i've been more focused on shutting down the existing station, moving that, as opposed to what the impact is going to really be through the rest of the town from having the somewhat inactive rail lines become more active. Right. I mean, we can certainly 
say as a general statement, a long ride from Fall River, New Bedford, is probably not in the best interest of, of, of ridership. But having said that, wh whether it's that they make it an express train or whatever, I think that's different, as you just said, than a we'll call it abandoning the Lakeville site. So we can do our general displeasure that, you know, people have said, what are the expected riderships? What's, what's the cost benefit to spending a billion dollars to do the rail line? But w we were welcome to go to all those meetings. So we did go to those meetings. You know, right, to the yeah, South Coast. But, but yeah. interestingly, the outcome of those meetings was not indicative of the testimony that was provided. Yes. Right. They yes. cherry picked exactly what information they wanted to present right. this in a way that it makes it as if there's a critical mass out there among townspeople and elected right. officials of support for this. And it's absolutely yeah. incorrect and it's false. Right. Now, so I, I think that th that's a fair, a fair statement and we should say that. Mm -hmm. But if it did go through and they did build a, Min a Middleborough station, then what mitigation should we right. ask for? And that's the second so, piece of it. So this, that's the that second piece of it. So I don't disagree that we say uh, as a select board that we disagree with uh, the real service that's being suggested uh, through Middleborough. Well, is, I guess the question, too, though, is, you know, in theory, there's an ability now to keep the, ex you know, not that it's likely to happen, per se, or maybe it would be, but to keep the existing Middleborough Station, what would happen is that the trains coming up from Fall River, New Bedford, and from Taunton would all meet at that rail junction and then back up to the Middleborough Station is what they're saying. That It's not a preferred option or right. to move it up to Middleborough, but right, so right. I guess that... I'm just curious about, I think the mitigation con conversation really happened mainly because of the potential closing or movement of the Lakeville station, yes. not because of anything else that may impact the town, because the trains are going to be coming. If there, if there is a South Coast Rail, we will have active train lines coming through town that we don't have, I should say, more active train lines yes. um, with yes. crossings and, and noise right. pollution right. Um, that we don't have right, right. now. Right. But we, right, and, and you've been to those meetings, and we should just voice our displeasure. Right. But I don't want to uh, send a mixed message that the displeasure is one. That can be a general a general statement. But, but there's real but then mitigation. If they, if they move forward, then what is the mitigation for losing the Lakeville? Right, but I guess what I'm saying is, is there any ability to leverage both? Because we will have impacts from South Coast Rail in general, whether or not they close the Middleborough Station. Right. So I just want to make sure that on any letter or any discussion that we have, our first probably concern and priority in the way that we would get more attention is to talk about mitigation related to closing the Lakeville Station because of our smart growth yes. development, yes. our you know transit-oriented yeah. growth, our planning right. that's happened there for economic development there. But on top of that, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that we will have additional detriments to the town of Lakeville just by virtue of South Coast Rail even coming to fruition Existing, whether or not right. we're yeah. moving the Lakeville station or not. Yes. So I want to kind of make sure that if we're writing letters or we're having the conversations that that's always another point so that we're bringing no, up I, I, as no, the I, very last point but always you know if it's no, a letter I just I, I agree. down the bottom because we're going to end up with I agree. Another issue. No, I agree. So. But yeah, more trains is a problem. Right. So we should, if we're getting mitigated, mitigated, if we're being paid off, but in terms Nate can understand. As national heritage. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's the next conversation. <laughs> the, there's two, there's two, two aspects that, that Mitzi's point is, and I think it's a good one. There's, there's two potential impacts of this that we we want to be uh, I want to say compensated for, but it's mitigated for. That's the correct term, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's changing um, the demographics and rural character of our town. Right. I mean, it, 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 
was exactly so the town really had no say on on the location of the lakeville station but you know what it was a bitter pill and we swallowed it and as a result of that they they formulated a, a development around it for the sake of of right. smart I, growth and all that good stuff i read that report today about the seven sites they were considering prior to to try to find out if there were any environmental issues that they came across in developing the Lakeville station and of course they were all archaeological issues that were you know discovered and as issues when they were constructing the Lakeville station um, but it, the backacre farm was considered as a property and what the response was by the state was that when surveyed the people of Middleborough and the surrounding communities uh, determined that the agricultural use was more important to maintain the agricultural use of that land than it was to put the station there. They also oh, pumpkins once a year. Uh, yeah, that's a great it was, they actually talked use. about strawberry strawberries. farming. It yeah, was the strawberries, strawberries at too. the time. Um, that the strawberries were more important um, to the region, so they weren't going to locate it there. But it was actually a pretty interesting but report. But that just shows how completely asinine it, those were, reports it, are. Right, there were they seven. They say anything, <laughs> that the and strawberries, it's somehow yeah. all of a sudden that's <laughs> right. the basis right. of the decision. Yes, if strawberries. If it's in writing, somehow the reason it, it why must it be did, true. The reason why I went to Lakeville was because of strawberries right. originally. So <laughs> maybe we need some mitigation in the wow, way of other fruit. Thing. Yeah. Other fruit no. products. We need some turtles to crop up. <laughs> I agree. Behind Chez so, I, I right. think so. No, I, I, I think <laughs> we should carry the theme of, of <laughs> mitigation. But the mitigation is really not the the additional noise, the additional not the additional crossing, but the added traffic to those crossings. But right. It's the I don't, I don't want to create I don't want to create the blight of abandoning the station now they're going to say we're going to use it for overflow parking in, in the cape flyer well right they're both just boondoggle reasons to keep it open and right. continue with solar yep so they they just shouldn't do that if they were going to abandon it then sell us the land for a dollar and if they're not going to do that and they were going to put in solar then i would think and, and you're going to blight the area which I, I think we should fight them tooth and nail for that. Uh, they they should provide a police detail, as as uh, was demanded in the abandoned hospital property. I don't think there's any difference. As a matter of fact, I think the trucks that park at McDonald's and other places would just find their way to this empty parking lot, mm -hmm. and they'd run them all night with their sleepers you know, yep. uh, getting ready for the next road trip. And we're going to have a police detail problem of just going there. Empty parking lots are just not good ideas. Right. Significant empty parking lots. Right. So uh, I think that the mitigation can be as if, if they're going to abandon, I'd like the land. That's a good point. Yeah, I think that's With, a reasonable request. You can Without. put it on the tax roll. But right, but without the solar array. Oh, without that's, no, the, yeah, I think no, the right, solar because, array yeah. should stop. Right, because that, that's bad. foolishness. Right, but that's that's the concern. They go forward, right. they put the solar array on, right. and now they're you know, what right. are they going to do at that point? And now right. they have all that money invested in it. Right. And right. then they're right. never going to get it. So so I think we need to try to stop that solar. We need to try to say, listen, and ask for the land. If if, if the movement to the Middleborough station. Is, is in your cards, then agree to sell us the land for a dollar and uh, that type of thing, and certainly ask for police detail. Now, none of this is going to happen right away because that rail isn't coming from New Bedford and Fall River Anytime soon. Uh, next year. Right. But, but from a longer-term perspective, it does impact the viability of that whole area. I mean, we have a developer that wants to develop more housing down there yeah. well, so you know then you have you have all that now the, the question is in terms of the 40s yes money Keiko has said that that's something that will remain like she is comfortable that they're going to be able to continue to pay the 40s yes money even if the station moves <laughs> but subject to appropriation oh, the, right right i, I mean i i, 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 I think she's right. being sincere but right. my, my fear right. is, is that that just changes right, right. 
if I may, what I would like, the last two years, we've been underpaid by about 150000 right. that the MBTA guarantee in their budget right. to either pay the full amount of the 40S or at least the difference between right. what? Right. The state funds. Yep, yep. To yep. guarantee it and right. not no, I, I think and not that, just say a subject to no, appropriation. I think, I, no, I think that's true. That that we'd want to guarantee it for a the period full of amount. years, whether we talk about it for the next right. uh, fifteen and year period. But also if the town decides it wants to expand the overlay, which right. I think is an issue that was is gonna come up in this fall town meeting, then that has to be part of it. Right. If, that they if somebody's grandfather going to the district move forward on all of this stuff if we're committed to de development in that part of town with transit oriented um, residential development they can't just move it on us or if they do they, they've got to ensure that they pay that money right. right I think you know to if we're requesting that we get the land sold to us for a dollar that that land is somehow grandfathered in as a transit center yeah. yeah we can do what we'd like with it but yeah. it allows us to continue the transit oriented housing yes. district yeah. and smart growth that we've been planning on developing yeah. in that area and maybe as the next station is only a half mile away they could build a pedestrian footbridge you know, over 495 to the new station It'd be a turtles. really really long one mile half a half. mile you know, is it a mile and a half? Someone said it was a, a nice mile and nature a half. walkway. Right, well, it can't be elevated. That no, I, that's what I heard. Was, it was well, a mile and a half. The other, I, I don't. The parking I don't lot, know. Right? It's if, actually if pretty far walk, away. I took a picture of it today. Yeah. Right, if you walk from train. the train station to the, the old it. station in in Middleborough, it, it certainly, I, I would think a mile. But I also looked at the hospital site. Whether you're going to walk from the hospital site to go to, uh, eventually that will be developed by someone. So will people be better off walking to the Lakeville station or the Middleborough station? But that's kind of beyond us. Our mitigation should say that that district is also part of that overlay district and any 40S money uh, that's due from the state has to be, any shortfall should be guaranteed by the MBTA not just for the vacant property and future development of what's already on the drawing board, but if we get the parking lot, we'd like that grandfathered, and, and also the, the hospital property. I, I wanted to know, too, with the Gatra contract we have, does that have anything to do with the train being in Lakeville and having any issue with that? It's not like an overlay district in no. terms of what Gatra can service, only MBTA stations? Or, no. Okay. No. I just wanted to make sure we didn't have any unintended no. consequences of no. losing that status. Because I know that the T, which or the ride, which is a byproduct of the T, will only go into certain communities, and it's only if they're within right. uh, their right. district. I think it's a matter of trying to get two parties in here, the Gene, Gene Foxes of the world, the rail, and then certainly Pollock regarding the solar. And th they are tied together, but they're two separate departments. And we should voice our concern to Gene Fox that even though we're talking about the station, we're really talking about the solar also. Not to her, but we want to make her aware of it. All right, I think we, we kind of have a few good ideas yeah. here that we can work with. So can I just ask, as far as the meeting, are we going to go with October 18th to meet with Jean Fox and her South Coast Rail team at 6 o'clock? And then, because Mike Roderick, he can't, you know, it, you saw how many emails. <laughs> what did I say? Roderick's. Singular. Roderick. You called him Sorry, singular. Because the emails right. are going back and forth every date we put out there. So as of right now, I haven't asked we, Gene we, Fox we, about October 18th. I, I think 18th. we should make it when when this board is available, specifically Mitzi and Aaron, because I'm usually available, mm -hmm. and, and whenever Gene Fox is. If the other people okay. can make it, I think too many people 
right. are involved yeah. and will never get the, the project, meeting. Yeah. No, so, I agree. So okay, when, let's they, do when the Mitzi and Aaron at six o'clock are right. available, let's let's give Gene okay. those dates. Did did you float the date of the eighteenth with Gene? No, I went first with the board of selectmen yeah. and then yeah. tried to coordinate. Do we have a backup date if no. she says I, no? So I had suggested um, on the twentieth because we have the legislative lunch in the Cranberry Country Chamber of Commerce that day at LeBaron. It's like 11 to 1.30 or something like that. And so I know that Senator Rodericks and Keiko Oral yeah. were yeah. attending. So I figured that we could do it after that if that's, you know, 3 o'clock or something. If, or if they're available and they're going to stick around, absolutely. As a secondary option. Right, right. October 20th at 2.30. As a potential option. 1.30? 2.30. I think the lunch ends at 1.30. Oh, I see. All right. Okay. I'll so would email we her right tonight. After that or? Yeah, we could meet at 2. At LeBaron or back here? No, you'd do LeBaron if they're there. Yeah, we could just I mean, meet at LeBaron. We'll make it easy for everyone. Make it easy for them. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll email her tonight before I go home. So 18th and or the yes. 20th. And if not, I could do the 26th. All right. 26 work for everybody, too. Nate, do you have some, uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. You have some, uh, mm -hmm. a list of town-owned properties? Six wow. Well, might be easier. Aaron, after, um, you had asked me to call Brian Madden to see what he thought of these parcels up on County Street. I don't know, did I give you one of these? Yep. Okay. So we're on to agenda item num number five, which is to review some town-owned properties uh, to submit to Natural Heritage as mitigation for the new police station site. So I did have um, Nate look at the value of, if you look at the middle parcel, the tw town-owned 20 acres, John was concerned that we wouldn't be uh, using valuable land for mitigation. Yep. We have it valued on the assessors for 419.5. Um, Nate thought it was probably worth 1,200 an acre times 20, so it would be worth about 24,000. But if you look at the green parcels which Mass Audubon owns, I sent this map up to Brian Madden, and he looked at if the line where on this back parcel of Mass Audubon, if you brought that across where the upland is next to 140, mm -hmm. which he said might be around the five to six acres, it isn't turtle habitat. He went on Natural Heritage's map. He said it is uh, habitat, and he thinks this would be a good one to float um, towards Natural Heritage. Uh, because there is turtle habitat on the other side of 140 yeah. in the gravel pits. Uh, I'm not going to verify whether there's turtles there or not. I think I want to make sure we don't give away valuable property. Whether there's turtles or whether it's agreeable to them, let, let them do their own uh, due diligence to find out. But I don't want to give them, if there's, if there's 44 acres, and, and we're due to give them five acres. I only want to give them the five acres, right? right. No, I, I, I get your story, but I'm not going to say that there's turtles there or not turtles there. Let them figure that. Well, out. Well, it is good habitat, and what they he said Natural Heritage does like is being um, next to the Mass Audubon uh, property. They Can we like give them extortion. property in Freetown? <laughs> So yeah, they'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> as long as Nate is is satisfied that that's a good parcel from a town perspective, I'm all, I'm okay with it. My recommendation would be go ahead and offer that that full 20 acres. Uh, it's not a buildable lot. We can't really use it for anything. But I would send the assessor's records with it, showing that it's valued at 419. <laughs> I don't know as though I would. Right. Say well. You right. Know, probably but not but. But I thought, I thought the Mass Audubon one was the better one. No, 
But uh, that already is Mass Audubon it's for 40 acres. Yeah. Right. But I don't want to give him 20 acres. I want to give him 5 acres or 6 acres. What do we have to give him? Well, I did ask him. I did ask him, it, huh? it, could that be like at the land bank, bank it with natural heritage in case the town has? <laughs> he recommended just doing, um, for now, just that back What do we land. need to give him, five? Well, what, what, whatever, what, what, whatever, right. It's got to be right. comparable or comparable right. land to what right. we're using. Right, no, 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 yeah, I, I, I get that. But there's enough there. upland on that middle property in the front. Well, on the back. Well, back side. The, well, I don't know. How much is on the front, Nate? Is is that? Uh, there's only maybe a few half acres, half acre. Half acre. In the very front, yeah. And it's yeah constricted because you got the hundred foot, you know, wetland buffer area. That, I mean, you just can't build on it in that small front area. Okay. So okay. the the next piece that's adjacent to that twenty acre property we own as well. And I can see benefit to retaining ownership to that. There is a fair amount of frontage in the front. Then, it, then it's so not offered. Value to one of the adjacent properties. Not even in the cards. Well, then. the Roundsville that donated didn't want wanted it to be kept all as well. Didn't deed it to conservation commission, but they wanted it protected. Is there a deed protected. restriction on it? Uh, no. no, they didn't sell it. Yeah, but but if it's property that's worth money potentially. Yeah, I wouldn't do, do that. You, so we're talking the middle, the middle twenty acres. Right. And and so, uh, I don't object to the twenty, but I don't want to give them five or give them twenty, and then the next fiasco, because there'll be another one that they'll want to want more. Right, but it, it comes to the upland, so the the all yeah. of this wet is worthless to them. They don't consider that even right. anything they want right. so if an aggregate you can get in the back enough acreage yeah, the back. to satisfy yeah. it then right they're, they're just going to do a right. calculation right. and determine what the upland is yeah. and apply yeah. that yeah. to yeah. the value so that right so if you have want. to give them the 20 to get the five or uh, right you do i guess we'd have to you, do that yeah. yeah i mean you can't you can't really subdivide yeah. out just the upland right. and well, there'd be a fee associated with that as well. If we turned around and got a surveyor out there to, you know, slice off a piece of land, and, and you know, you got to go through the planning board and recording. And right. So I, yeah, I don't know. I don't object to the twenty if you're Where telling you me it's it non-buildable. Because there's no frontage no, except yeah. on county. Right. A one forty. Yeah. That's, but you can't get to it. Can't get to it. Can't get to it. Can't get to it. Right. <laughs> Depends on who you are. Right. <laughs> We'll right. grant them. For yeah, the remember, re remember the little turtle crossing. The, on the little wetland designations doesn't mean necessarily no, but a swamp the, the little turtle on there does. Oh, get, yeah. cross that out. <laughs> there is habitat. There's a map there. that shows listen, a turtle listen, on that listen, property. I don't care what's there for habitat. That's good for them. So to make I don't it in, care. I know. Let them. Let them. Because let them there determine. is other habitat there. It no. could be interesting. I don't. For them. Let them figure it out. So Offer them the 20 acres. They have Brian. Um, Brian? Brian Madden at the LEC. Talk to Misty, Aaron. Okay. Yeah, Pass yeah. This by. Okay. Do it. Oh, Misty. Make it so. All right, all right. And do you want to show her this map? Give her this map. Yeah. Oh, that one is like a poison thing on it. Mine is a nice turtle. <laughs> and just one other quick item. When we met, why don't you put extortion next to it? <laughs> it's turtle holding a money bag. Yeah, they, yeah, I'll go along with that. I'll go along with that. All right. Thanks, Nate, for doing that. Uh, and I did talk to Brian about those trees that are hazardous on the park property. Whether or not um, we need to include that in our amended permit. The dead trees. The dead hazardous trees. There's a lot of other dead trees that are through that nature trail that fell down that last storm. They're all over the trail. They're everywhere. And so uh, Jeremy's They're putting everywhere. them on a map of the property and I'm going to have Brian look at it and he said if they're hazardous we can probably just cut them down and not have to go to natural heritage and include those in our permit. Are we sure? Are we going to have to give up another listen, 20 uh, acres listen, to cut down, down six to cut trees? Down dead trees because they hazardous. Well, cut them down. 
Well, I mean, it's we've no got different that 10 than acres. NASA wants that have in dead trees next to the school playground. Right. Well, the they concern is down. there's 10 acres that they have a restriction on next to the new ball listen, fields. Listen, if they're un if listen, if they're unsafe because people walk there, cut the damn tree down. Don't. What are you asking? Dead trees. You would have, when Jeremy talked down. to you the other day, you said, you know, map them out and check with Brian if we should include this in with our amended permit to cut them down, or can we just go in and cut them down? Listen, so I'm going to. Listen, if we what did I say? To check with Brian. Yeah, check with Brian. But and we, cut down the maple tree at the old library, too, before it falls on someone. If you have to ask permission of someone whether you should cut bad. down a dead tree because you know it's dangerous. About. You better get cutting. Really? What if they say no? There's also say no, you're liable. <laughs> yeah, there's trees leaning on other trees that are I dead. Mean, it's like dead tree on listen, dead tree. Let's not let's not get crazy. Right on by the haunted house. Dead tree on dead tree violence. Yeah, it's actually uh, it's actually in the haunted house tree. area. So. Oh, okay. I don't even want to hear about that. Who are we asking? This is a it, this, Brian this meeting that started out as no meeting. Matt. He worked turned into a he's very interesting working meeting. for the town. He's at LEC, the environmental company. Here's the thing: we don't want to do anything to upset the apple cart right. with the natural heritage right. people. So Ask I want him. Yeah. him to right, right. But if people, if it's on a walking, if it's in the middle of the police thing with no one walking in there, that's one thing. Well, here's the thing: there might be an, ex an exception or an exemption. You right. might say, "Oh no, no, you guys yeah. can do it." But I want to make sure we have something in writing Agreed. with him giving us instruction mm -hmm. yeah. so that we mm -hmm. yeah, have and some he, And some if he cover. says you can't do it, ask him who's liable when it falls on someone. See what he says to that. $100,000. Right. <clears throat> okay, number six. I saw it with my own two eyes. Wow. We were up on MLS for a brief... <laughs> Like like uh, George Costanza <laughs> flying too close to the sun on wings of pastrami. So this is from Lorraine. <laughs> so it's still up there, right? Or do they take yeah. it down? Nope, it's up. Um, I heard from Kyle today, um, the, which was kind of comical, but his administrator, or the MLS administrator, reached out to him um, with regards to some red flags that kind of yep. showed up with the listing. And That's what they do. So <laughs> he followed up um, with regards to those, and he listed them here in the paper that I gave you. Um, I guess <coughs> when the listing goes up, there should be some kind of commission compensation for, let's say, some, another realtor that might recommend this property to their... Yep, a buyer's agent. You got it. So Kyle said that something has to go in there, um, percentage, dollar amount. He says you could just put a couple hundred dollars in there um, and call it a day. But what did Sharin say? Hmm? What did Sharin Power Everett term. say? I asked her about paying whatever cost it is to go on MLS if it's 500 or under. Right. She said no problem. It's not a commission. Right. It's yep. the cost. So she didn't have a problem. But doing. what about... So, let me back up a step here. <clears throat> I would assume that Sharin knew, had done this before. Somebody must have advised somebody at KP Law on how to put a town property on MLS, right? That's my assumption, yeah. is that somebody must have done it because um, that's why I thought if, if you call them, They'll say, all right, this is how you got to do it because it has to conform with the MLS contract where you do have to offer something to a buyer's agent. Um, so maybe you can just follow up with her and say, if you, Sharin, haven't done this, is somebody at KP Law, have they done this? Because there's specific aspects of this that they're now telling us that we have to revise or are they going to just terminate the listing? So... We, we would have, what's the other points? We, we can't answer we these questions. These have to be done by however they've done it in the past. And maybe the answer is they've never done it, mm -hmm. right? No, because I didn't pose that specific question to her. What, what, but I did ask her if there is a fee 
for the realtor to put it on because Aaron, you thought there might have been a, there would be a fee. Wait, did we pay Kyle anything? Mm -hmm. We didn't want to take anything for. So I'm saying I'm thinking if it's the 200 that w he has sent us the contract and that we pay him the 200. Well, what are the other concerns out? beyond the uh, buyer's fee? The, the only other the thing that they have said is um, that there's a contract between whoever was requesting. The MLS a listing posting. contract, right? Um, Kyle's listing contract, right? That came so, here, and that's just between you know us and Kyle. Yeah. Um, and then the other piece of it was, should there be a sale, and that um, the compensation to the other realtor. Right, right. I mean, you can ask him, but I don't think any of us would object to whether there's there's a buyer listing that that's a couple hundred dollar fee, and whether but there's a a co-broker thing of a couple hundred dollars. I mean, he certainly spent I, a lot of time. It can be whatever this. you want it to be, so I don't object to that. Right. If, if we have to do those, we should do those. I guess. But we should have a contract with him with the state disclosure. of the yeah. Like we already put on the listing, unknown on the listing. We actually did the dis. Oh yeah, that was the it was unknown. Thing is that the, you know, the lead paint, um, that, you know, we just have to sign that we we have no knowledge. Okay. All right. So he was really, um, you know, good about walking me through all of this. So you know, right. prepared everything so that it was pretty easy on right. our end. W would we ob would we object if we needed to pay two hundred and two hundred or something or something? No, no, I wouldn't object no. at all. No. Yeah, so, just put so, that on there. That's so if we have to do that, let's do that. We should have a contract yes. with him and compensate him for the, right. the listing. Well, it's a couple hundred bucks to do that, and then and then the uh, the the seller's broker, if you will, uh, or the buyer's broker, gets a couple hundred dollar compensation if you have to state it somewhere, which would be in his contract, I think. Right. But. But I don't disagree with Aaron. Uh, ask the attorney. Okay. Somebody's got to have done this before. But there. Quickly. <laughs> we'll reach out to them first thing. Yeah. I think it's great we'll that you put it up. So what I did was um, in your sign folder is I put a copy of the um, contract. The contract. So I could sign it. Okay. Once we talk to Sharon. All right, number seven, review language changes to the special act establishing the Department of Inspectional Services and Permitting in the town of Lakeville. I did make copies uh, for each of you. John didn't want to see it. <laughs> I'm all set. They did it. They approved it on the governor's desk. So, Nate, you can well, update done. them on while I'm looking for it. There's not really much to it. They just, no. they just took out one now small here section that said um, by appointing a director of inspection and services, it meets the statutory requirement. It's 143 that requires each town to have a building commission. We have that language elsewhere in there, but it's the opposite. You know, the building commission and the Right. Yeah, and the attorney didn't care about this. It's just kind of semantics. So her recommendation was that we allow this to be uh, moved forward as it's drafted and not request a, an amendment to it, which I'm okay with. Are we making a motion? I make. No, she said that you didn't no. have to officially vote. You can, but she Let's just needed it. the okay. I'll Let's do it. Okay. Let's make the motion. Uh, okay. Second. Second. All right. Uh, discussion is let's do it to show support to our new director of inspectional services and permitting. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. It's unanimous. So pending a signature by the governor himself. Nate, you're going to have to change your uh, signature on your email. So it says building commissioner. <laughs> I don't want to see that long. 
Let's talk to that new Director of Inspectional Services and Permitting about a memo regarding the haunted house. Do you have um, Kenny, Ken Oliveri's email? No. Did you get that? No. About what? Yeah, you. Yeah, you were CC'd on that, I think. I don't have it. Okay, so. Uh, on Ken, today? Yeah. Oh. Did you see it? Yeah. Y you it went to. Too, right? I didn't look. Okay. I better work all Scott. Um, it did not go to Rita. Okay. All right. Do you, can you print that out? Do you want me to just read it? No, I can go print it out. Good morning, everyone. Um, <laughs> well, let me give the backstory on this. So, the Haunted House people are doing their thing. Um, back in 2014, at the time, our building commissioner was Nate. Nate P. Darling. He did an inspection on October 30th, 2014, for the purposes of identifying future corrections for the attraction and maintenance projects on the buildings used. And he outlined some um, projects he wanted to see happen some improved emergency lighting, the limit sheet plastic for enclosures, high flame spread and smoke development issues, improve ADA accessibility, limit open cordage. So this is electrical feeds, that, the extension cords uh, all over the place. Um, in terms of maintenance projects, he wanted them to clear the roof of the existing building of debris, fix the roof leaks and the roof sheathing, do some general winterization or weatherization because there's some holes and spaces under doors, holes and walls, rotten trim and create an enclosure for paint storage, which they did. Um, so, he notified them of this. Um, then we got an email. So there was some electrical work that needed to be done. So in conjunction with the inspection of the electrical work, uh, Nate was there and, and noticed some some of these issues still existed. I think is a, is a fair way to put it. Um, did Ken go and visit himself? No, he just agreed with the email that I sent. Okay. You know, I can elaborate a little bit on. Yeah, on if you could you fill in the rest done. of it. So I I've been working with the folks at the haunted house now. This will be my fifth year. Um, great group of people that just seem like they're not quite getting the safety concerns that I have with the haunted house. I mean, a large number of people go through there. Um, they're using sheet plastic, which you see in my memo is a high flame spread in smoke development. Um, they do have open cordage run all over the place, pl direct plugs. Um, indoor uh, ornaments, non-grounded, plugged into stuff. So I've been working with them a little bit at a time, and as Aaron mentioned, I was just out there a few days back with an electrical issue, and I noticed they built a lot more. They've mm -hmm. really, really expanded at this point. So in order to mitigate all of that, I've asked all of the um, Parks Commission to meet me out there, do a walkthrough. Many of them have never even seen it or know it exists. Um, they know the haunted house is there, but they don't know to what extent it's it's actually there. So. So, so I had never been out there, and I met Nate out there today and did a walkthrough of the premises um, for the sake of seeing it for myself. Um, and, you know, Nate's concerns are valid, and I think that he talked with some of the folks there. He has a meeting scheduled with the, the two guys that really kind of coordinate the bulk of it. And I think that they'll be able to work out a, a reasonable plan to mitigate the issues and, and move forward. I don't think it's it's a cease and desist situation. But I think the bigger picture to this is that I think we really want to have a conversation with the Park Commission and the Haunted House people about moving forward. There doesn't necessarily seem to be a written contract in place. I'm not even sure if the town got paid for last year's. They did, but they deducted the 3000 From the electrical. Electrical. Right. So I think that 
there's an opportunity here, and the opportunity is to tighten things up to make it, um, first of all, have them address some of the safety concerns that, that Nate brought up, which are completely reasonable, which they're willing to do. So it wasn't like there was any pushback of right. how dare you. Right. This was right. like, you know, whatever we got to do, we'll do it type of thing. And he's going to elaborate that tomorrow again with, with the folks that are, that are in charge, more or less. Um, but it is kind of a free-for-all out there. And to Nate's point was, if you're doing it in a certain way, it doesn't necessarily fall under the building code, but they've built some structures that are structures, where there's roofs on them, and it's kind of crossed the line. If you have a couple thousand people going through there, um, and the wind's blowing just right, and, you know, it could, it could, there's potential problems there. Yeah, and the lights were on on Monday when I was going through there. All the lights they had down on the ground, which was odd. Well, yeah, they're working on. You know, stuff. so that's so what they, they're working got on. People there doing different assembly and, and getting it ready because yeah. it's a big project. It's right. really a, a lot, a lot of work. What do they do for fire protection? Do they have a lot of uh, dead trees? Or like that? A lot of dead trees. No. That's one of my biggest right. issues. They do have a. EMT there, not a not a fire truck. Right, they right. Have an not, EMT there. They have the EMT there. They have the police detail. Okay. Um, they have a few extinguishers kicking around here okay. and there, but it's a pretty long venue. I mean, yeah. they go through that six and a half hour, yeah. or forty five minutes yeah. to walk through there, and you know, using plastics and corn stalks and, and wood everywhere, and that's not so much the issue as it is the enclosures. You know, once you put a roof on those, now you, you know, you can push over a couple of, uh, you know, corn stalks, but, you know, the roof on it and everything else and all the plastics can't get out as well as you should be able to. Okay. So I'm comfortable that there's a plan in place to deal with it, but I think we want to look at this kind of more long term and, and we probably want to get a copy of that contract from the Park Commission. I it already exists? asked. The last one I could find. Well, was even if it's expired, we want to yeah. know what the terms mm -hmm. were. Okay. We want to revisit it and we I want to get something in writing in place. And if it's inadequate from mm -hmm. kind of our perspective, we want to beef it up and, and make it yeah. reasonable. Um, because, you know, again, it, it, the goal isn't to, to stop it. The goal is just to make sure that there's some pr safety measures in place. And, um, so I appreciate you, you mm -hmm. suggesting I go out and look at it, and I really think you know the two of you should at some point oh, too, and maybe you can gone through a couple times in the past like two weeks. Um, you want to go in a half hour, Mitzi, when the meeting's over? <laughs> kind, of, <laughs> kind of dark, but we could go. No. Uh, there is a paragraph in there that speaks to the building commissioner and the uh -huh. fire doing the annual inspection too. There was. Yep. Yeah. Do you know if the the if Danny or Dave Goodfellow's been out there this year? David was David? No, he oh, okay. Yeah, okay. No, they, that, I don't think they've been out yet. Two thousand twelve contract? I mean it's five years old. I think they're obligated to follow that up. But, yeah. but I mean there there's a whole bunch of dead trees down around there too now. Um yeah. which just came down. I mean I was there probably a two weeks ago wandering through on that nature trail that then goes you know right by it and then in we went in through the haunted house area and then it just was there monday and there's a lot more so kind of like leaning down. falling that dead trees jeremy can go in and cut yeah there's some of them out. if he goes right through there he'll find there are at least four or five right across the path so we have about a week and a half i think we can get it done and they are willing to work with me i just as my appointment uh -huh. authority yeah. i want to make yeah. sure yeah. folks were clear as to what I was getting into over there, that, yep. you know, in, if, in case I needed support in getting it done. And, and fire code violations and things like that make it more scary. Yeah. Well, when you say haunted house. that they, they're not obligated to do it, you meant... Ooh, um, the, oh, when with, we the fire, with yeah. the fire department? I mean, if they're in an expired contract from 2012, could we still have the... I mean, would the fire department still be required to go inspect that. Oh, the one can require it. Well, no, but why wouldn't the fire department want to do that? I think they just do it annually. Yeah, we, we used to have an annual meeting with the selectmen, the park commission, 
and the old Haunted House Committee. We used to have the annual. Does anybody meet with the Haunted House Committee? The Parks Commission does? Or do they just Park let them go does. in and do whatever they want year after year? And this is the first time it's really become a. Uh, it's on look. Well, it's, it's yeah. really not the, the first time that this is, you know. Right, you, you had that letter two years ago, yeah. I mean, right. I've been yeah. a little bit nervous about it since I started inspecting it because, you know, what, what are, are we saying by taking yeah. a look at it? You know, are we saying it's safe? I don't know. I mean, does it? I can't get it to the point where somebody's not going to trip and fall. You got roots, you know, right. coming out of the ground and uneven surfaces. Right. So it's more worn too than it's been. Yeah. I mean, we can stop anything catastrophic from happening, but you know, you. Right. I mean, there is kind of a extra your own risk aspect to it, but that doesn't mean that we're not on the hook if something bad happens. Right. So I think, you know, you want to look at the big picture stuff. And, and that's kind of what I think Nate and I, you know, today the conversation we had was you want to get the big stuff and mm -hmm. deal with it, but I think moving forward we want to try to tighten everything up. And the first thing we got to do is get that contract in order mm -hmm. um, and, and just give the expectation. It's, it's not the, – the goal here isn't to – discourage them so they stop doing it or anything. The goal is just to make sure everything is done properly and, and safely. And, and, um, and, and that, I think they, they got that message, the folks that we yeah. talked to today. It wasn't... And we do require the separate insurance coverage, naming Lakeville as the... Uh, I have received their insurance binder for this year. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. something I was going to ask. So yeah, That's here. It's good to know. Um, Okay, so Nate, thanks for updating us on that and taking me out there today. I appreciate it. Um, th is there anything else you want to add to that? No, I'm going to be meeting a couple of the Fox commissioners out there Good. within the next couple of days yep. to make sure that they all, uh, you know, have a look at it. Mm -hmm. And we'll go from there. When I think that there's been, historically, since I've been on the board, there's been a little bit of confusion about park commissioner versus selectman and who's in mm -hmm. charge of what and I think to a certain degree I'm happy to defer to the Park Commission relative to most of this stuff um, but you know I really want them to do it I mean they really got to you know the fact that there's been a lot of turnover with the Park Commission recently is an opportunity for them to dig in and get involved and take a look um, but I mean they should all know what they're signing off on. Um, this is going to trickle into the maintenance of the building. I don't think that that's an issue right now for the opening of the haunted house because the, the building's not part of what they actually walk through. So we're really right. going to have to get there as well. The building is, the, is in deplorable condition. It's the a office, now. you mean that office building there? They yeah. don't walk through that anymore. No, 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 no they don't. Okay, because the storage building, building up back there years ago said you can't. Oh, the building commissioner, yeah. his right. granddad. So oh, yeah, no. Yeah. But, but it's being used as, as a workshop almost, um, which raises concerns for the people that are volunteering there. Right. That, you know, was it even safe for them to be in? Yeah, there's impeded egress, uh, no exit signage, that kind of stuff. So we're going to work on that. Yeah, poor lighting. I mean, really, it was dark in there. I mean, you couldn't. I had sunglasses on, of course, so maybe it wasn't as dark. No, it's pretty dark. You know, the floors are compromised, you know, so you can yeah. feel it as you're walking around. I'm just yep. saying, when the town clerk's office is Ted Williams would be ashamed he saw the condition it was in. <laughs> All right, so um, that's number eight. Number nine is. Do we have anything else? Um, for tomorrow's meeting, Aaron, I just wanted to check on what I'm going to be bringing to the DHCD for the board. Okay. Rain and I have been working on. The map. Um, I was going to show the smart growth district that we have, the lots that uh, Bob Pellucci intends to buy, but I expanded it to show the Lakeville Hospital all on one map. I'll color code it and all of that. I think uh, that's what you're, you're asking, right? That you want to expand where we are, which 
is right here. And the whole Lakeville Hospital, I think that gives a good idea of where it is. Right, and, and Nate actually did the, uh, that it's all within a half, half a mile, 99% mile. of that lot, the hospital lot was part of that. But certainly we're addressing only what the CanPro did, but I wanted to address Le the Baron. hospital site. I want to right. address LeBaron right. too, in that comprehensive permit, if that's something that we are going to talk about too. I mean, I don't even know if we have the latest copy of the amended comprehensive permit that's been amended a hundred times, but my concern is uh, whether or not we're going to get credit for any of the properties over at LeBaron based upon the modifications to the comprehensive permit and having rental and for sale on the same permit and how they're monitoring it. But we we right. have we have a town attorney that we hired to go through that contract and outlined all the changes. I mean, well, I, each I each time I think this the original permit and I think it's been amended three times. Do we have and Aaron? All I have those? copy. Yes. I okay. Do. Yeah. If you could so maybe bring, bring them. some, I'm gonna. I, I, me I don't to email them being, to you tonight. Right. Right. I don't mind it being. Discussed, yeah. Why don't you email we it to me? Too. Going, it would be good. Right. I thought we were going there specifically. I think it's all for the 40R. I guess I would say I would say while well, we're there, let's talk well, about our entire housing inventory that includes all of our existing 40B projects that are ongoing. That one, that one bothers me. Once we got that letter back about the subsidized housing inventory that it was rejected, which we kind of knew was going to happen anyways, with Kensington Court. I mean, with Sterling. But it's the same thing that happened with that is happening now. At or LeBaron. will happen now uh, right. at LeBaron. I, I anticipate we're going to get denied on the subsidized housing inventory for the project at LeBaron. And I would like to get ahead of that if possible, or at least ask them if there's anything we can do at this moment, because I really think that the amendments to the comprehensive permit have taken it out of the 40B statute, essentially. And so then the zoning board has passed, passed, or, you know, passed it by, and it's been approved. And I, I think we just don't have the guidance on it. I, I don't know how DHCD is going to expect to monitor those projects, which then therefore I think means that they won't be qualified as 40B projects and we're not going to get credit for it. Each time I've read the amendment, Mitzi, I believe the full 97 have to be, it has to end up with the 97, that's the 25 percent component. What but, I think has but disappeared. But the component is, that is the rental is the 25, right? But the for sale is separate. Well, in the front, um, there's for sale that's going to be 25 percent as well. Out front, there's several that are um, the duplexes. Affordable. Yes, but it's all under one permit, which includes the rental as well. But when what happens is the state approves it first before they go for the comprehensive. Yeah. That's what. But, but it's that's a what the state. Agency. Right, mass a housing. Agency. Mass yep. housing mass is just housing the financing. DHCD is the. But monitoring it's not, agent. it's not done to the standard it needs to be done I, for the sake of it counting. Of being dispersed. I, so, I, the, I, so the developer yep. gets the yep. benefit of ignoring our zoning rules. and yep. Because everyone thinks it's under 40B, but it's really not. A parcel, and everybody thinks it's going to be a 40B, yep. and then they sell it at market rate, yep. make millions of extra dollars, mm -hmm. and we get screwed yep. on, the, on the count by exactly. the state. So if mass housing is going to okay that, then DHCD should live with that decision. I don't care one way or the other. Right. I just want it to count. Yeah, I, I And don't. that's the same thing that happened to Kensington. Yep. They modified that, modified that, modified that, to the and point everybody where it knew went away. there was gonna be a problem, except there wasn't one, because it got built, and then, oh, that we're not gonna count. count it. Why aren't you counting it? We did it. As, it, as it was approved. It's a way to kind of... Well, we didn't approve that. That was a different agency. Right. right. It's subverting, really, local zoning because it comes in under a 40B that's properly formed as a 40B so that zoning has no jurisdiction over it. And then, it's and then it gets amended, essentially, out of a 40B under DHCD guidelines such that when we go to check on our subsidized housing inventory, it's no longer counted or never would be because it doesn't meet this criteria under 40B, but zoning's already approved it essentially by default on a friendly 40B. They, they give blessing to it, essentially. So it's going through with the blessing of the zoning board 
and and now we don't and that's the scary part is that our zoning board is conditioned to give deference to these circumstances and pretty much rubber stamp these mm -hmm. when they should be asking is this going to count right we don't care about mass structure health. it appropriately what does the chd think because that is the bottom line thing that's and, and they never, but they never get to that point but, right um, but tomorrow's that can be part of it yes but, right but the main focus was a developer coming to us around the train station which is the same thing though well oh. i from well, the rental I, versus the I, I don't sale know. I versus mean, the I haven't seen his his contract, his filings, and right. nor nor is that my Well you we went to that forte, meeting if, if you will. Right, but I don't know that he's Yeah, that might not be what he's doing. To do with any it. Of that. Mm -hmm. Our focus was, I thought, to say can we do a forty R district? district. Yep. And and are we going to get uh, compensated for it if it's I, properly done. I think that's all of it. I think it's talking about the 40 yard district. It's talking yeah. about a potential project there. It's talking about the concerns we have over the MBTA station too and moving. And if that still will count for our 40 yard district right. that we're moving forward to town meeting on, I think it's addressing the issues then that we have with the other 40B projects that are in existence and modifications and amendments to the comprehensive permit that takes it out of 40B statute. Well, I, I don't know what they are on counting for the LeBaron City. I'm just not familiar with they, it. They, what they won't count for. anything until it's done. That's the problem, well, it's too. it's not going to be done. It's 16 years, and it hasn't been half done. So. But by the time it's all done and we get notification that, sorry, you didn't comply yeah. with 40B, you actually don't get credit for any of those. No, and now you have. getting credit right along for all 97. Okay. Oh, since, you're right. Since, since right. the we've very been, beginning with the, getting getting with the permit. The first we, permit was issued. We've been getting credit okay. for them. Mm -hmm. I, I, Before they've been created. built, because it's yeah, in the plan, right? Completed, they, they say, oh, we don't count the same Well, one. right, but I don't know, then I don't know that we'll ever be completed if, if it's permitted for 400. Yep. They haven't got halfway there right yeah well, in be, 16 years yeah maybe that's the a answer. question that yeah so, and that's so fine if that's the answer but, but we are getting them counted you're saying that they won't count them when they're complete that may be but i don't know that that project will ever be completed in but, anyone's life but maybe but i don't know just, that maybe that's yeah, maybe a strategy they just give it to us and we have that in writing that we're essentially yeah grandfathered in for that one, so. once a 40b permit is issued once the building permit is issued I have to package up this whole project Next. Um, and send it all every building oh. permit every it, occupancy permit. we're not the LeBaron is not done under DHCD that's why FHLBB I don't even know what that is but this latest report does not include the 14 um, the from Bob's Pellucci's latest project Water Street Federal housing, something. Well, I I just want to make sure we get a. But a DHCD fact straight does as to the, what the inventory. To accomplish at the meeting, I thought we were we we're only addressing the 40 R overlay district for the Canpro property, Jonathan White's property, and a potential of the hospital. I don't mind talking about LeBaron, but I'm yeah, not even familiar with it because I believe you're getting credit for it. Already, I believe you're getting credit for 97 units. That's what we have since here. That will since never, will ever. never actually be developed. You know, that's a good point, and that yeah. may be the strategy of the developer is to, is to, never finish it because. I think we're at 64. Right well, now. well, I think the economy stopped it. No, no, I get it. You know. Right, but I mean, if that's the case, then there's no harm, no foul. Right. 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 I, the, I the believe the fear is is that they get done and then it, it it doesn't count because they've changed the permitting so much that it doesn't comply with 40B anymore. Right. I don't think anyone ever realized that that Sterling wasn't going to be counted because it was such a a different build out from what everyone expected it to be for a all the reasons we we know about. 
the delay from the state and things like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think on its face, though, when you put so you I, I put think affordable in one right, building right, and you put right. market rate in another, so, that's right. So I, I think you're legal. getting credit for 97 units, mm -hmm. of which we probably have. We have 56 in an apartment, and maybe another 10, six or eight. Six or eight. I we're up to 64. Well, that we could be four, well, 50, 56 be plus eight. Right. Yeah. So, right. so, so you're at 64, and you're getting credit for 97. Now, whether it ever gets built out, like, I'll make copies not in our lifetime. Too okay. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Good point. I mean, I think I think it's worth a conversation, maybe in more general terms, to say, yeah. hey, look, we have these projects. Yeah. What happens? Well, with how these? would this play out? What happens yep. when they don't qualify? Right. Right. The project takes 20 years to do. Um, and they may not have an answer for that because, right. you know. But but I don't think they can. I don't think the 97 becomes zero. I think it's it's already at uh, 60 affordable. something. In my numbers. I thought 31 were already out yeah. of all of these that there's 31. Kensington Court count ever? Kensington. From day one, yeah. Kensington, yes. It did. So then they, a, they shut it off after the other thing was done. Because that was all affordable rental. It was when I, once the building permits were issued on Sterling Place, I sent it all in. That's how it happened. You have to. Right. No, no, yes, I get it. it. But my point is, is that we no. did get it initially and then when they said no no you didn't follow the rules they took it away i never got it for the one when i submitted my oh. building permits to add it to the inventory every year yep it didn't get added yeah i mean what the kensington court, never court, got added right kensington court got added right away when i sent in the building permits kensington, right kensington got added right. but sterling right. never did but right. kensington in right. theory but you know if there's 100 units there only 25 of them needed to be affordable right, right. but the whole 100 the whole 100 the whole 100 counted so if no you, e right in rental it's only 25 percent of it means the whole of the units count so but you only need to do 25 percent of it to make the project affordable I think what they thought was happening was one project, instead of interspersing them among the two, which you're supposed to do mm -hmm. technically, they put them all in one building and they said, well, we have 50% affordable, so the whole project should count, that's 200, but whatever happened with the project, it still, it didn't pass muster because it wasn't dispersed throughout the entire project. Although they only needed, they needed 50 in a 200 um, right. unit development them, yeah. but they put, put them all in one building right. which right. is not how so we ended up with double from the original yeah, yeah, the original yeah, project you would you would have gotten 200 were all you had for sale 50 condo. you'd have gotten 200 that's how it started no it was supposed to be a for right. sale yeah yeah and right, but the town town knew that those were being rented we'll say for two thousand dollars whether it's seventeen hundred or eighteen hundred or two thousand dollars they're far from affordable so if we didn't right. get credit for that then we certainly were part of that we understood that those were very expensive places and we got credit for a hundred which I thought was a pretty good deal but truly though all 100 rentals are affordable yeah they only needed to have uh, 25 of them though right right affordable. so that was a part of our <laughs> Argument was, hey, <laughs> yeah, but Sterling. We did. ended up right. Much Sterling better than did right. Sterling didn't come. I get that. Yeah. But but Kensington did. Is that correct? Kensington counted no. right away. Right. No. No. Not the yeah. time. All right. I'll make a copy of this for everybody too. All right. I I I agree with what you're saying. That is, if, if we're getting credit for ninety-seven, as as I said before, when we did the inventories being quiet on the issue yeah is the best issue because we are getting, getting credit for 97 for yeah I don't want to talk them into that it's 60 yeah. so why don't we just talk to them about what happens with modifications to yeah, permits in general no no I, I, yeah, I, can, I, yeah. I agree no, I, I agree yeah I exactly agree just you know how does not, that work you're not even the monitoring agency for for the LeBaron project then that right. won't get anybody right. in hot water Be, because if 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 a builder comes to us on the CAMPRO property and say, by the way, I'm doing 80 units that are affordable, age-restricted, 
in affordable in the permitting process, they'll probably give you credit for those 80. Then after everything gets built out with duplexes and maybe single family homes, will the 80 still count? Unless someone says something, I think they will. Yeah. All right. All right, I've hit the wall. Yep, the last wow, thing. Wow, that was a good, good emergency to... meeting. It was going to take a half hour. Mitzi, you wanted to talk about oh. regional FinCom? Do you want to, what are we doing about tomorrow? Well, so we're, we're going. Turn of events. I, have you heard? What? Uh, we had a legal opinion years ago that it had to be posted in both locations. Okay. Steve called uh, the Attorney General. Yep. And supposedly Carrie had said, nope. You know, um, you don't have to. Uh, All right, we're on. But she forewarned him if your judicial body has named your town webs your region's website as the official website. I had Lillian call the same woman. Yeah. They have never um, named their website as their official website. You know, right through. You know, we looked so at these. So they haven't laws. actually posted it. Officially? They posted it on, they Your posted website. it. And what she told Steve was if you go ahead and meet, you're open to uh, an open meeting law violation if someone files a complaint. Who? Do you want to just meet there and we can just have our own meeting? But he, planned, he said it. Them. Yeah, they're they, meeting. They're, they're meeting. meeting. So, so we'll go, we're going to go to that. Who's right? meeting? Yeah. The regional yeah. FinCon meeting, meeting, even though it wasn't posted. It's at 6.30 tomorrow. So, yeah. so they're well, open to an open meeting. Where do we meet? The they school are, library? Not you guys. Yeah. The, the school? Yes. Do so we we're properly posted. I'm just yes. participating as a member of the Board of Selectmen tomorrow night. He said that they will only right. post them here at, as a courtesy. And I said, no, Steve. We had an opinion years ago. And Who's Steve? The Owen. I'm sorry. Steve okay. Owen. Where is it? At the library? Yeah. Yes. <coughs> so I'll be there at 6.30. 6.30. Mm -hmm. And if it's a shop meeting, yeah. we'll still... Yeah. We'll have our own meeting. We'll still go. Yeah. Perfect. Is there a long agenda? Well, you don't even know what the yeah, agenda is because you haven't seen the posting. I haven't right. seen right. any of it. Okay. So wait, they posted a meeting but didn't invite you and you're a member of it? It was, so we set up a meeting last time we had a meeting for the first Thursday of every month. Um, but I haven't seen an agenda I haven't seen any documents. They were supposed to send through the finances of the region and a number of different things that we talked about from the last meeting, which they didn't send through at all. So I'll be going in there blind tomorrow with no information. He does have all of the public records, the information that he had asked That's for. Fine. I think I shared with you, Mitzi. Good yeah, luck. Yeah. If, good I luck if you, if you I don't want. Have a copy good of luck it. if you want the finance community to go no, through do, town uh, records. For my meeting okay. tomorrow. I mean, to. For a finance committee, I mean, once again, it's whatever that, that charter is, whatever the charge is for the finance committee. But having said that, the, the, the issue really is a school committee meetings posted on the town, forget the finance committee, a school committee meetings posted on the town website. Yes, a, is that the in issue? In our opinion, yes, they're supposed to be posted in both towns. Aren't. Yes, they have been. They, and what happened is been. the girl at the region sent it to Freetown. She had it in her drafts, but never sent it to Lillian. All right. Okay. Okay. I get it. Okay. So we're on for 6.30 yep. without the known agenda. Yep. Do you know, what, what was the, just quickly in 30 seconds, what is the charge of the committee? Uh, to... I think be an advisory committee on matters of budget okay. and financial matters right. so and make a recommendation. The new strategy is to just try to um, right. <laughs> grab stuff from the town? I don't know. Like I, there's, there's no inward direction, there's no inward focus on by the school committee relative to their own budget? I wish I could tell you 
but I haven't seen an agenda and or anything else. And so you don't go to the school committee meetings. I anymore. did not go unless to the last one. unless there's something that's relevant right. to us. Um, right. I'm hoping we'll get an update of which we have not received on contract negotiations with them and that meeting got canceled. The right, Tracy. appointed okay. representative the or any of that. The, the, the answer the answer to that question is that was made clear at the last town meeting, I think, and that. Well, well, clearly, no, but continues. But there was when, when there we said were representations yeah, that, made by we're, Rick. We're going to come and, together with a plan. Right. Yes, and that no, this is a one-time thing, and that we just so, need to get through this year, and then we'll come together and, and meet on on well, you know what, familiar terms, or I mean um, consistent yeah. terms to right. so solve the problem together. But then there's just public records requests right. relative to the so, town budget. Right. But what happened at the last meeting was that. There was a directive before I left from finance that, committee. Meeting. Finance okay. committee before I left from that presentation that I was going to bang my head against the wall hundred thousand times. Did I watch. saw all <laughs> of did my, watch it. my facial watch expressions it. of displeasure at being forced to sit there. Um, but what Steve had said was, let's all come back to the next meeting, thinking of ways that we could, you know, help solve this problem and kind of close the gap between the resources of the towns and the needs of the school okay but is that so I guess I, I guess if you're if you're brainstorming different options one of them is of course to uh, find resources that the town is provided for the sake of maintaining its budget and, and snipe them at town meeting I mean that is it worked it's a right. legitimate Path, well, the, the big thing to think about is that that wasn't supposed to happen again. No, right? and so what we did last year is we increased our spend on the school by a million dollars. In total, we took in with the new growth and everything else a little less than a million dollars, and so that's our base level. So all we have available for new funding of the schools this year is what we are going to bring in i guess and well well i shouldn't say that because we also increase then spend on the rest of our departments right because um the money came from stabilization opeb and other places so our departmental spend is underspent it's under budgeted by four hundred thousand. so as we get to next year this budget year we already will need to spend the additional four hundred thousand dollars to maintain the amount that we gave to the schools from last year Plus, come up with what we're providing, which they're going to request probably another five hundred thousand, plus the additional four hundred thousand that we had spent in other departments to fund it. Right. So we need to somehow come up with another one point four million, and we've lost our stabilization, our OPEB funding, and our debt payments from last year too. So if there's a grab or a supposed grab made for free cash, we again don't have that because free cash is set aside for as in accordance with our policies can I get a couple of copies of the financial policies can right. I get like right. 10 of those right. for tomorrow right. to right. hand out because that right. would be really but I, I think the real thing is the town has financial policies the school is going to come to us based on the town meeting with their solution their new business plan how they were going to move forward as, as Aaron said to to say what which we're, we're kind of insinuating maybe correctly so that if the ploy is to do another grab then decided. that that isn't a plan of how to run the schools that's just how to fund what's in front of you today and then the that's town goes back an act of desperation right. but here's the thing right. to think about too is that with what happened last year the schools have increased the base amount Hmm. as to what we were right. giving them well, by more, an amount you guys that, right, which, which, you know, we had some new growth, we had some additional things, one-time permit fees and things like that coming in, which did flow through to free cash. So if we're okay with that base level, we got a, a two-year base jump, but at this point we can't get another two-year base jump. We can probably sustain the one-year base jump, yeah. you know, with some, you know, hope. Again, it's not, it's not, it's not revenue we can count on. It's all the one-time things that we have available. Listen, our policy says don't do that. No, I know that. I, I, that's what I'm saying, too. But where we are currently, 
we have we can't go backwards. They're not going to go backwards on the budget. No. So we have to come up with the way what? to fund no. the existing, what? and they're going to request more. That's the problem. Right. right. So. Right. No, that is the that. problem. Right. It's, We've it's, artificially it's inflated the. It's a compounded. The, the, oh, right. totally. It's a compounded issue. And our our stabilization is down. Our OPEB is down, and our debt payments are down. And it's and it's way more sophisticated than the average person puts the energy into understanding. Right. But they need to because it's going to. It's going to completely um, diminish or decimate his rich word town services. But then I'll say that he did say decimate. Well, he did say it. I we know. all heard him. Actually, it was video. It was right here, yeah. And, and that's fine. I mean, from his perspective, that may be accurate with the school's budget, which is fine, and, and it may be true. But taking the money out of the town. You know, is 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 not the solution to, to fund an out of control budget. Right. Because what right. is going to end up happening is, within another town meeting or two, they'll just we'll just have to be start laying off emergency services right. people. Right. Well, right. you know, we're not going to be able to to keep right. the police on the streets. I mean, it's going to turn into that. Right. It keeps going because if, if it's growing at the rate you're describing. Right. Well, it's it's that plus everything else that we need right. to do as a town, okay. which includes a lot of things that, the problem is when our budget includes a lot of non-personnel, because we have infrastructure we need to maintain, we have a lot of buildings right. and things like that that we need to maintain. Roads and all that right. stuff. Which is all under our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. They look at that as not as important as people and their jobs, because there's an emotional component to their budget where they're not willing to look at cutting their costs, whereas we can look at cutting our costs and saying, can we turn the lights down? Can we, you know, not not pave anything this year? Can we not, you know, what yeah. can we do can that's we not going to... away with the same right. fire truck squeeze, squeeze, but, squeeze, but, squeeze, but, right. Right. but I think you know what the solution is. The solution is they either cut expenses or they do an override. And the expenses to, to, they just, need to cut are personnel. Right. So Correct. they need to do that. And they don't want to do that, and which they, is fine. And, 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 and that, a political and decision, right. but if you got to raise the... Right. They want us to advocate for that, and that's not what we do. Right. You're going to say that in... Right. You're going to say that in public, and if if you yeah. one of the only dissenters, then you you're the only dissenter, but you have the three total three selectmen. Right, because we we have that. looked at the long term financial health of this and it's crazy. government, yeah. and they have not looked at the long term financial health of theirs. Yes, and, and that's of the climate. end of it. Yes, yep. right there. That's that's, that's, it. It. that's the true. sentence and right there, the and we end it. Right. Should I write that down? We're done. Like yes, done, end it. All right, I'm done. Oh, we so moved. Adjourn? We adjourn? It's a good motion. Second. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second and by second. And I yes, I I'm done. By roll now. call. <laughs> motion to adjourn. <laughs> by roll call. Burke. Aye. Hollenbeck. Aye. Powderly. Aye. We are adjourned. We're done, like Kim.